Just a few seconds away from kickoff here at Lambeau Field. Rod Marinelli still smiling, even though he 18 straight games in the state of Wisconsin. That includes a playoff game in 1994. But let's give Marinelli a whole lot of credit. He has kept the team together, John. He's done an outstanding job of that, and that doesn't surprise me. I spent a lot of time with Rod down in Tampa. Uh, he, he's a real coach, and you can tell the love and respect these guys have in the midst of being 0-15. That's impressive. I've been on 4-12 and teams where there's a ton of dissension. He's kept this team together and ready to play. They have been professionals, no doubt about that. They're going to have to deal with the elements on top of everything else today. Temp low 20s, wind chill of 10 degrees, and that wind is swirling down on the Lambeau turf. 38-year-old Jason Hansen, an outstanding year for him to kick it off to Will Blackman. And we are underway. Ball bounces off one of the up men, and it is taken by Jordy Nelson. Gets across the 25, has some space, across the 40, up past midfield, and he gets dragged down around the Lions' 42-yard line. A return of 44 yards on the play for the rookie out of Kansas State. And that's a great start for the Packers. They've been notorious slow starters throughout the course of the season. Jordy Nelson gives them a big boost and great field position to start with. Well, Aaron Rodgers, an outstanding first season at the helm, replacing Brett Favre, as you can see, 25 touchdown passes and has a chance to go over 4,000 yards on the season. Three res And Rodgers out to throw, looks and finds... The three-time Pro Bowler Donald Driver for a gain of about seven. And let's take a look at the Packers' offense. He has a 1,000-yard back, does Rodgers, in Ryan Grant. And two outstanding receivers in Greg Jennings and Donald Driver. All sorts of changes up front, though, on the line. Jason Spitz moves from right guard to left guard. The rookie Josh Sitton moves up to right guard. And Darren College makes a move from left guard to right tackle, replacing the ineffective Tony Maul. You got all that, John? I got it. Okay, good. <laughs> Second and short now for Green Bay, and that is Grant up the middle and a first down. Even though, even though Detroit has struggled such uh, on defense against the pass, I think I get the feeling from talking to Mike McCarthy, he really wants to establish the tone by running the ball, pounding it with Ryan Grant today. A couple rookies up front, Andre Fluell and Cliff Averill, both drafted in the third round this year, and the problem has been in the secondary. Just one interception from the defense all season. A lot of pressure on guys like Bodden and Fisher to get it done for Marinelli's crew today. Rodgers from the gun on first down. Trying to set up a screen and he loses the ball. That looks like a free ball and Green Bay is going to recover. Darren College, right tackle, falls on it all the way back in Green Bay territory. And Rodgers goes back to throw a screen pass to Ryan Grant and the ball ball comes out of his hand. I don't know if that's the call that uh, Ed Hockley wanted to make very close to the one over there in, uh, in Denver earlier in the year. Well, it was great pressure by a guy in Fluellen who has really only played half the season, has been inactive for several games, and he was working over there on Darren College, who's making his first start at right tackle. And Fluellen's getting his first start for Dwayne White, getting some early pressure. That's big for the Lions. They've struggled to do that all season long. A loss of 24, so we'll see what's in the Packer playbook on second and 34. Rodgers looking downfield and has a man. That is Jennings. Gets it up to about the 42-yard line. Aaron Rodgers right there delivers a strike to Greg Jennings. You, you know, in second and long, third and long situations, what coordinators try to do, what quarterbacks try to do, is get some of it back so you're in a manageable third third and third long, third and uh, third down situation. Third and 20 is not that, but that's a beautiful pass by Aaron Rodgers. So Green Bay pretty much back where they started this drive. Third and 20. A three-receiver set for Rodgers. Has Deshaun Wynn lined up in the backfield for the first time, and that is Wynn getting the ball on a draw. Gets it up to about the 33-yard line. Pickup of seven, much to the chagrin of this crowd. They wanted him to throw the ball there. Yeah, the Lambeau crowd wasn't, wasn't too happy with Mike McCarthy on that. You're in a third-down situation. They, they give the, the, the ball to uh, Deshaun Wynn, and it looks as if they may be going for it here. Well, we were down on the field before the game and talking it over with the Packers kicker, Mason Crosby, and he pretty much said kicking in this direction is not what he wants to do from a long distance today. So the Packers, 8 for 16 this year on fourth down. This one, a healthy fourth and 12. Lions 
are coming with the blitz. Quick hitter to Donald Driver, and he's going to be stopped shy of the first down. So a great job by the Lions defense after their special teams failed them on the opening kickoff. The 0-15 Lions will have the ball. Well, the Detroit Lions did its job on defense. This is Dan Orlovsky making his seventh start of 2008. And pitches it to the rookie, Kevin Smith, looking for a little hole and doesn't get a whole lot. Take a look at that Detroit offense. Smith, 116 yards shy of 1,000 for the season. Calvin Johnson, obviously their main gun. You talked about him, and you said you want to see him line up all over the field today. They do a nice job of that. They, they move their best player all around so that defenses can't key on, can't roll to them. They, they move them all over. You'll see him at X, Z, every receiver position. Gain of two, and there's Johnson in motion. Orlowski again to the rookie. Gets a few extra yards, tackled by Ryan Pickett. The eighth year man out of the Ohio State University. Green Bay's defense, an obvious drop off from a year ago, but they still have the two time Pro Bowler Aaron Campman applying the pressure. The strength of this team, obviously, in its secondary. Two Pro Bowlers, Charles Woodson making his fifth Pro Bowl. The free safety, Nick Collins, first time to Honolulu. And as strong as their secondary has been, they've sorely missed the presence of Atari Bigby. He was huge for them as they made the run late last year. They miss him, and it showed up in the way they played. Bigby just had ankle surgery this week, hoping to be ready for 2009. Now on third down, Orlowski pressured, gets out of the pocket, looks deep downfield, and it is just off the mitts of the rookie, Kevin Smith, who had gotten behind the secondary. However, there is a flag down. And that is going to be holding on Detroit. And Green Bay will decline. Ed Hockley, our referee this afternoon. Jeff Backus got power rushed right there by Brady Papinga, who's usually at linebacker. They've been moving him over to a defensive end to try to create some pre pressure. Papinga makes a nice power rush on, on Jeff Backus. Backus holds him, and uh, the Lions go to punt. Well, this is Nick Harris, who's had an outstanding season as well, but the ever-dangerous Will Blackman, who has two punt returns for touchdowns this season, standing at his own 27. Harris gets away a beautiful punt. Blackman... At the 20. Tries to break outside, but gets only one yard on the return after the 51-yard punt. Aaron Rodgers and the pack back at work. Packers offense back at work for the second time, and they missed a golden opportunity, John Lynch, after that 44-yard opening kickoff return. Well, they sure did. Jordy Nelson gave them a nice field position. They've struggled on their first drive all year, scoring only 13 points in opening drives. They missed a great opportunity right there. So now Rodgers with Grant in the backfield. A little play action to him on the move, and it is dropped by Greg Jennings, who's really had an outstanding year, a guy that's become... Really the number one receiver here replacing Donald Driver. He's had a he's had a big time year. You talk to the Green Bay Packers, they feel he should have been a Pro Bowl player. He had a Pro Bowl type season. He's become a bona fide number one. Right there on that play, you see an interesting thing, and you heard the Detroit Lions as we talked to him, Coach Marinelli, all their defense players, they talked about the effectiveness of Aaron Rodgers out of the pocket. You typically think of Rodgers as a packet uh, a pocket passer, but they talked about how good he is out of their pocket and how important it was to keep him in the pocket. Well, quick toss here to Grant, has a little bit of space, gets about five or six yards. Now, this is a guy that has gone over 1,000 yards on the season for the first time in his career. But this isn't the same Ryan Grant we saw at the end of 2007. Well, I think right there you see a nice run, but that's very uh, symbolic of, of the type of struggles that they've had. Right there, that's a, that's a tackle that last year I think you see Ryan Grant run right through. It's one tackler. He, he made a habit out of running through tackles last year. Right there, the first guy takes him down. Nice gain. Last year, that might have been a bigger, big play. Only four gains over 20 yards this season for Grant. Deshaun Wynn has checked into the lineup on third down. And Wynn gets the quick toss and has a little space. He's going to get the first down and then some. And Wynn is going to go the distance. Deshaun Wynn into the end zone. 73 yards for the touchdown.
beautiful design of a play by the Green Bay Packers right here as we watch the play. Donald Lee comes in motion. This is a pass look that the Packers give on a third down situation with Lee in motion. You're going to see Donald Lee right here. They get in their bunch situation, and there goes Deshaun Wynn, untouched until he gets to the two-yard line. Beautiful run by Deshaun Wynn. He's been filling in for Brandon Jackson, and, and great play for the Packers. Mason Crosby adds the PAT, and yet again, the Detroit Lions are down early. 73 yards for win equals six. It's seven zip. Deshaun Wynn, the second-year man out of Florida, the longest run of his career, also the longest run of the year for the Green Bay Packers. 73 yards against the worst rushing defense in the NFL. Well, that's a perfect example of why they're the worst rushing defense in the NFL. Absolutely no one touched them on a 73-yard run. You don't see that much in the NFL. Lee Bodden, they get the Packers got in a pass look right there with a bunch. Someone's got to be in turn, someone's got to be in contain and turn the ball back. Absolutely no one was there. And that's why they're the worst rushing team in the NFL, rush defense in the NFL. Avion Kaysan back to return it for the Lions. Mason Crosby having a little issue with the uh, with the frigid football. Wind chill at, at 10 degrees. In fact, he's going to need a little helping hand from Will Blackman there. You ever had to do that, Lynchy? I've done that a yeah. couple times. Make sure you get that <laughs> finger out of there in a hurry, though, on a day like today. <laughs> you don't want that getting in for sure. <laughs> Who cares if the uh, if the kickoff you know rolls around like Charlie Brown out there? Don't don't worry about that. The ball is taken by an up man. It's Casey Fitzsimmons who gets across the 30 and is dropped at the 32. Well, stop me if you've heard this before, but the Lions are down. 7 nothing after Deshaun Wynn does a little leaping for joy on this holiday season. Lions breaking the huddle for their second drive of the afternoon. Down 7-zip at Frigid Lambeau. Or lost. Great play by Al Harris right there. One of the top corners in the NFL. Great bump and run player. That's what he does best. Right there, you're going to see Nick Collins, the, the free safety, jump Calvin Johnson coming across. Al Harris is one-on-one -on -one with John Stanford, and that matchup favors the, the Green Bay Packers all day long. Well, Stanford, one of the many new faces at wideout for the Lions. In fact, Johnson was the only one on the opening day roster that's active today. This is Smith on second down, makes a nice little cut before Johnny Jolly brings him down. Speaking of Jolly, Rod Marinelli, despite his 0-15 mark this year, he's, he's like the Tony Robbins of the NFL. He just preaches positive thinking, and he's always talking about what do you do with adversity. Well, and there's a lot of coaches that preach this. Rod Marinelli believes it. He lives it. He talks about three reactions to, uh, to adversity. Number one, they're oblivious to it. Number two, you can crumble under it. Number three, you can embrace it. He embraces it. almost seems as if he's enjoying the challenge and the lessons he's learned in an 0-15 season. Ah, what fun is 15-0? Third and four, Orlovsky out of the gun. Has some time. Now he's pressured, and he is finally going to be dropped. Jason Hunter there with the sack his second of the season and other than Campman I'll tell you these guys on the defensive line haven't got it done but thanks to the secondary here oh that was a tremendous job by coverage you're gonna see Tremont Williams right here on Calvin Johnson he's simply not open he's hanging on his low hip Orlowski had nowhere to go great job by by finishing the deal from the uh, from the, the Packers defensive line and big big uh, big big stop for the Green Bay Packers so make it back-to-back -back three and outs for that Detroit offense. Harris on to punt for the second time. This one not nearly as good as his first effort. Blackman's going to pick it up at the 24 and gets about three-yard return. And the Packers will start with the ball right there, up seven. Trying to shoot an arrow into the Lions' heart again. It has been all Packers so far. Two drives for each team. Green Bay scoring on a 73-yard scamper by Deshaun Wynn. Here, Aaron Rodgers looking deep downfield. Has Jennings, 
and the ball is dropped. Lee Bodden on the coverage, but Jennings had him toasted. And Jennings missed an opportunity right there. You're going to see Greg Jennings right here. They get an eight-man front. He's, he's got Lee Bodden in coverage. He beats him. He's got him by a step. Rogers delivers a perfect ball, and he's, he just drops the ball. You don't, want, you don't want to leave those opportunities out there. Great throw by Aaron Rodgers. The guy that is seventh in the NFL, almost 1,200 receiving yards, and he's dropped a couple here in the early going. Second and ten now, and this is Grant off the right side. And a nice job there by Ernie Sims. And that's what Ernie Sims does best. When you're looking for building blocks for this Detroit defense, it's hard to find many. But that's one guy I think, if he can put the mental part of the game, he's got those type of skills. He can go sideline to sideline and make plays like that. Outstanding play by Ernie Sims. If, if you are looking at this defense and trying to reconstruct it, what do you start with, John? Well, it's bleak right now, but I think what you have to do when you're playing this this particular defense, you need a force in that middle. They had one in Sean Rogers. They let him get away, and I think they're sorely missing him. Third and ten for the Packers. Rogers from the gun in an empty backfield. Tries a quick hitter, and that ball is dropped by Ravel Martin. Not a perfect throw by Rogers, but one that certainly could have been caught. In fact, all three of Rogers' incompletions have been dropped by his receivers. And this is, you're going to see Green Bay in their in their uh, big five, five wide receiver set. They, they want to do this to expose Detroit in space. But twice now, you're going to see the pressure by Calvin Pearson right there. Detroit's thought is come with it, get the ball out of their hands, we'll come up and make the tackle. It's worse twi work twice on fourth and third downs. Jeremy Kapanos barely gets it away. Avion Quezon just kind of watches it squirm to the ground, and the ball is dead there at the 33-yard line. And, of course, this is the final regular season week in the NFL. Later on, you got the big one in Philly. Cowboys and Eagles, if Dallas wins, it is playoff bound. Philadelphia is going to need some help. But, obviously, a meaningful game. You heard Brian Westbrook this week say, you know what, I hate the Dallas Cowboys. So, even if we know by kickoff we're not eligible for the playoffs, I don't really care. I want to beat them anyway. So the ball was actually touched back at the 43-yard line, so they have moved the ball up 10 yards, which helps Detroit. Six total yards in its first two drives. Here's Smith trying for a little cutback, and he gets almost nothing. And Kevin Smith, the kid that went to the college down at Central Florida, he's never played in weather this cold, and he said he was... Hoping that it was going to snow. He'd get the full Lambo <laughs> effect today. Well, he was hoping it was going to snow. Rod Marinelli says, I'll take this kid in a parking lot in sand or in snow. But Rod Marinelli, the Detroit Lions really like them, and I think rightly so. He's got outstanding vision, outstanding power. I think he's going to be a big time back in this league. He, he's been a bright spot in a tough, tough season for the, for the Lions. Smith now lined up alongside Orlovsky, who's working out of the gun on second and ten. Looking and finding Calvin Johnson, who drops the rock. Well, it's the first time this afternoon they've tried to get to 8-1. Tremont Williams there with the physical coverage. Right here, you're going to see Tremont Williams on Calvin Johnson. And when you play the Packers, you just you don't get that much separation. If you're going to if you're going to get a, a catch, it's going to be highly contested. They get up, they they're in your face, they stay low, they stay low hip. They're very opportunistic. You've got to be on the mark if you're Don Orlowski. He was right there, dropped by Calvin Johnson. So now third and eight. Detroit, eight plays so far, eight yards. No math wizard, but that's not real good. This time he gets it to his tight end, Casey Fitzsimmons, who gets it close to the first down, right near the sticks. Once again, the yellow line is unofficial, but he appears to be short, if that is true. Right there, you're going to see something we talked to Don Orlowski about. He said it was going to be hard to, re to, to move the chains, intermediate routes to their wide receivers. Their corners are so physical, Dan Orlowski. But then all, the, all of a sudden, Dan Orlowski talked about the opportunity with the tight ends and the backs in the passing game. You see him expose it with, with uh, Casey Fitzsimmons right there. So now it's fourth and less than a yard, and you're in Green Bay territory. It's, it's a no-brainer here at this point. You're but, going for it. You're going for it, and I think if you're the Detroit Lions, you may take a shot right here. Everyone's expecting the run. Maybe go up top to Calvin Johnson. He's ISO'd on Tremont Williams right now, one-on-one. -on -one. 
Well, it is a two-receiver set, but it looks like there has been a timeout called, so that's going to be a no play. The timeout called by Detroit. That's their first. Well, Ed Hockley obviously having a bit of problem with laryngitis. So I'll translate there. There was a timeout called by Detroit before the play was actually run. They were running a quarterback sneak right there, and they got it. They wish they hadn't. That's been that kind of year. You get a first down, you call timeout. We'll take all the help we can get, says Dan Orlovsky. Now, Orlovsky's a guy, they've got four quarterbacks on their roster right now. They've got Drew Stanton and Drew Henson, Dante Culpepper, who started a handful of games but's banged up. Orlovsky's the only one that is unsigned going into next year. What do you see for his future? Well, I think he's a good player. I think he's a player in this league. But I think if you're the Lions, that's the first place you look at building this organization. They're going to have the first pick in the draft. I think there's two obvious choices. you got Sam Bradford. And Matthew Stafford. And Matthew at Stafford at Georgia. You go that route if you think they're franchise quarterbacks. Otherwise, free agency and maybe Matt Castle. Once again, both of those guys are underclassmen and would have to declare in early January. Back to the task at hand. Fourth and one. Johnson in motion. And that is Smith, and he's going to get the first down. So the Lions, for the first time this afternoon, move the chains. That's good tough running by Kevin Smith right there. He had to break a tackle to get that first down. He did exactly that. Big conversion, good blocking you're going to see from the left side of the Detroit Lions offensive line right there. Kevin Smith's going to come and run through the tackle. That's first down. Manny Ramirez, number 63, getting his third start of the season for the ineffective Damian Cook over there. Got a nice block. Orlovsky looking, and the ball is picked off. That is Charles Woodson, the five-time Pro Bowler. He's already taken two to the house. This time he's going to get dragged down to the 40. And a look of dismay by Orlovsky. He overshot Calvin Johnson, and Woodson was right there. And you can't do that with Calvin jo- or with, with Charles Woodson because he's going to make you pay. His seventh of the season, he's going to Pro Bowl for this reason. He's an outstanding player. Just a misfire by, da- by Dan Orlovsky right there. And Charles Woodson, outstanding coverage, outstanding catch. He's not going to drop many of those. He's made a living of doing that in this league. He's a guy who's had an outstanding year. He's played corner. He's played safety. He's been very unselfish for the Green Bay, Green, Green Bay Packers and probably had his finest season in the NFL. 36 career interception for the Heisman Trophy winner out of Michigan. So Green Bay starting at Detroit territory for the second time today, and that is Grant for just a couple. Dwayne White on the stop, and for the first time today, let's check in with Kurt Menefee in L.A. for the game break. Well, Chris, the NFC South is still up for grabs. St. Louis trying to hand Atlanta a loss. Good run by Steven Jackson from four yards out. St. Louis leads it 7-3, and Atlanta lost. And the Carolina Panthers are division champs and the number two seed in the NFC. Chris and John. Thank you very much, Kurt. Of course, Carolina could also solidify that NFC South championship with a win down in New Orleans. Right now, the Panthers up 6-zip going into the second quarter. Rodgers, a quick hitter to Donald Driver, escapes the tackle, gets down inside the 25, down to the 24, a gain of 16, and there's Driver celebrating in style. And Chris, I circled uh, Greg Jennings right there, but what what Aaron Rodgers saw right there was an eight-man front. It was was very obvious, an eight-man front. You're going to see the safety creep. He's got one-on-one coverage. He believes it's a good matchup, one-on-one coverage with both his receivers, Driver or Jennings. Made a nice little quick slant, and that's what Donald Driver's made a living doing throughout his great career. Driver in his 10th season out of Alcorn State, a three-time Pro Bowler. Gets another first down. Here, Grant again inside the 20. He's got more space inside the five. Dragged down by Ryan Neese after a nifty gain of 20. And that's when Ryan Grant's had his best right there. He's going to start it right. Tremendous vision. Cuts it back. You're going to see the blocking. He's going to start right. You're going to see the great blocking over here. He sees great vision. Makes a great cut right there. Ryan Grant makes the free safety miss. Outstanding run. That's what they've been missing from Ryan Grant, and that's a welcome sight for Green Bay Packer fans. And there is an injury on the field. 
Scott Wells, the center, is being looked at. And while he gets checked out, we'll check out for a quick break. Pack up 7-zip. Scott Wells, a fifth-year man out of Tennessee, helped to the sideline. So more reshuffling along that offensive line for Green Bay. Jason Spitz, the left guard, now moves to center. Alan Barber, the second-year man, moves to his vacated position. Now Rodgers, quick hit, and the ball is incomplete. Intended for Jennings. Great coverage right there by Travis, Travis Fisher out here. But again, you're going to see the uh, Greg Jennings on a simple slant route. When he sees one-on-one -on -one coverage, Aaron Rodgers is audibleized into those quick slants, and they feel they can they can win that matchup every time. Travis Fisher this week said, you know what, if we finally break into the win column, I am walking back to Detroit. But keep in mind, he did suffer a concussion last week in the loss to New Orleans, so maybe that factored in. Here on second down, Grant, another cutback, but he is stopped shy of the end zone. Down at about the three-yard line, Paris Lennon, the former Packer, wrapping him up. You know, statistically, the Green Bay Packers have done a lot of things very well. You saw the turnover on defense. They've done that well. They've been better than anybody in this league on scoring off turnovers. In addition to that, the red zone offense. They're sixth in the league, 27 touchdowns out of 45 opportunities. They've been very good down here. Aaron Rodgers hasn't been picked off all year uh, in the red zone area. And Jermichael Finley. Third-round pick out of Texas this year has checked into the game. And now everybody spreads out. That is Donald Lee at the bottom of the screen, the starting tight end. And the ball is tossed to Finley, and there is the touchdown for the rookie. The first of his career. I'm going to see your Michael Finley here in the slot. This is a guy that they really... Uh, both both Mike McCarthy and Aaron Rodgers talked about Aaron Rodgers says other than Charles Woods and the most raw talent on the entire football team He's a guy who came out of Texas Mike McCarthy talked about just that at Texas They never really split him out used him as a wide receiver. He compared him to Tony Gonzalez This is a guy with four catches, but they went on and on you could see that this was a guy They were going to try to feature in the last game moving forward to next year and his fifth catch of his young NFL career leads to six points Mason Crosby adds a seventh and make it 14-0 with just under a minute and a half to go in the opening quarter. So the Packers capitalize once again on another turnover. They have now scored 124 points off of turnovers. That is the most in the NFL. Of course, the coverage doesn't stop here on Fox. Next Sunday, who's going to be taking the field and when? All these teams, postseason bound, a couple more slots still up for grabs today. The postseason on Fox, all in HD, coming your way next Sunday. So now if you're the Lions, you're 0-15, you're down 14, less than 14 minutes into the game. What are you thinking, John? Well, I think the only thing you can do is stick with your game plan. We've seen a heavy dose of Kevin Smith. You've, you've seen them try to get the ball to Calvin Johnson, but I think you got to take some shots downfield. We talked to Dan Orlowski. They're double covering him right now. He talked about, though, you know, and to, to me it's very much like when we used to play the Minnesota Vikings. They didn't care if you had two, three guys on them. They were going to put the ball up and try to make them, let him make a play. Orlowski talked about it. They haven't done it yet. It's all been underneath. I think they got to take shots to Calvin Johnson up top to try to get some, some big plays on the offensive side of the ball. Well, Johnson dropped one earlier, and then they overshot him. A pass that was picked off by the Pro Bowler Charles Woodson. And now here's Will Blackman once again on the uh, on the golf tee duties, if you will. Mason Crosby, a short kickoff taken by Fitzsimmons yet again. Solid return up to the 38. Detroit has had decent field position, just hasn't done much with it. You're exactly right, and I think another thing that that uh, could make the Lions confident in their first meeting this uh, CD season against Green Bay, they were down 21 nothing. They came back to lead late in the fourth quarter, so Detroit knows they can make the comeback here. Of course, John Kitna was their quarterback back in Week Two. That is Dante Culpepper, three-time Pro Bowler. He was signed back at the beginning of November, bothered by an injured shoulder, had to shut it down the last few weeks of the season. So down 14 nothing. This is Smith on first down, gets up past the 40-yard line. Give him a gain of about three. 
And this is a guy that, John, we talked to him yesterday. You're, you're impressed by his energy, his maturity. I mean, he defended the coaching staff. He, he seems like a guy you can really build around. Oh, absolutely. You see the physical talent on the field, but I tell you, I don't know if I've ever been so impressed by a young rookie. He's got a lot of depth to him. We asked him about 1,000 yards. He said, hey, 1,000 yards shouldn't be the story. We're 0-15. The guy is a bright guy. I think can be not only a leader on the field, but a leader in that locker room as you move forward for the Detroit Lions. Second and six, and Smith. Makes a nice little cut, but Brady Papinga is there to drag him down after a yard gain. Nice tackle by Papinga there on a one-on-one -on -one situation with Kevin Smith. The Smith, one of these guys you can build around. Calvin Johnson is one, and then after that, on offense, you're looking at maybe a guy like Goster Sherlis, their rookie first-round pick, but this... This team needs plenty of components to get back to respectability. They need components on both sides of the ball. That's what they're lacking. They're lacking talent. Johnson in motion on third and five. And Johnson catches that one, battling Al Harris. They're going to give the grab to Johnson as he gets up to the 48-yard line. And that is going to do it. There is a flag. Goster Sherless up there to defend Johnson, who was battling with Al Harris. And it looked like he got shoved by one of the Packers. Let's see what Ed Hockley's going to call here. I think he's getting Al Harris for pushing God's or Cherilis right there. After the play was over, unnecessary rushes defense, number 31. That's a 15-yard penalty. There also was the end of the first quarter. That foul happened after time ran out. Therefore, Well, give Al Harris some credit. At least he picked on somebody that wasn't his own size. <laughs> he went up. Will the Lions shove back? They're down 14-0 after one. John Lynch and Chris Rose back at Lambeau Field. And, you know, Fox, that X not easy to use in signs. Good creative work right there. Very, very solid. Beginning of the second quarter, after the 15-yard unsportsmanlike conduct penalty on Al Harris, Detroit, there at the 36-yard line, and let's show you what happened there at the end of the first quarter. My man Al Harris knows better than this, but I thought it was a little curious. A big lineman to fall, and I think our man Godser took a little bit of a dive there. <laughs> well, he's about 320 or so, and if Al Harris is pushing him around, what do you think Aaron Campman's going to do to him? <laughs> well, second and seven now for the Lions. They're down 14, but, John, you get a touchdown, you're right back in this thing. It's a great opportunity for the Lions right now. Smith breaks two tackles, breaks two tackles, tries to bounce outside, cuts it up, and did well just to gain a couple. Aaron Rouse. And the first quarter, when it's 14-0, it's pretty lopsided, and, well, here you go. Very lopsided. Right there, you see what people are so excited about with this Kevin Smith, though. Great run. He's breaking tackles. He's making that run on his own. Ended up with a positive play. Very easily could have been a play for a loss. Well, here is a negative for the Green Bay Packers. Aaron Rouse is being looked at. We'll take a quick break. Third and five for the Lions. Orlovsky looking, throwing the balls knocked away by Brandon Schiller. Pass intended for Casey Fitzsimmons. So now Detroit... Have another look at maybe a fourth down play, and got to go for it again, right, John? You, you got to go for it. What do you have to lose? Uh, you're 0-15. You're right there, you see Orlowski and the Lions trying to take advantage of the matchup on the linebackers. He talked about that. Great job by Brandon Chiller right there in coverage. Aaron Rouse injured earlier is checked back into the game. Four receivers set for Orlowski on fourth down. And the ball is caught by Kerry Colbert. He has a first down at the 20 where he is pile driven down by A.J. Hawk. And a nice strike by Orlowski right there to Kerry Colbert. They've struggled <laughs> other than Calvin Johnson. Someone mentioned it's Calvin Johnson and three other guys. Kerry Colbert's one of those guys and a big fourth down play for him. Colbert, a guy that was originally a second round draft pick by Carolina, started the year in Denver, moved to Seattle, and now Detroit. You see a little slant route by there. You never get much separation on these, so you got to be good on your throws and you got to be strong on your catches. 
Good job by Detroit right there. So now first and 10 at the 20 after the fourth down conversion. This is Smith. Gets it inside the 15, down close to the first down. And let's send it back out to Los Angeles. A game break with Kurt Menefee. Minnesota and the Giants. Adrian Peterson, eight carries for 11 yards until this. A 67-yard touchdown run. The flag was offside to get the Giants, so it stands. And Minnesota has a 10-0 lead in the second quarter. Of course, Chris and John, if the Vikings win this game, they win the NFC North. Thank you, Kurt. And here's your playoff scenario. Chicago, by the way, is up 10-0 down in Houston midway through the second quarter. So that's putting the pressure on Minnesota. You get it going against the Giants. That's Smith again. Darts inside the 10. you got to love this kid's running style. Yeah, you do. I talked to Sam Gash, the running back coach, down on the field before the game, and he talked about his best attribute being his vision. You see a perfect example of that right there. He stretches the run, sees the cutback hole, and go, goes and gets it aggressively for a nice game. Smith has already carried the ball 11 times this afternoon, coming off his second 100-yard game of his career. Went for 111 last week in the loss against New Orleans. So now first and goal. Another healthy dose of Smith, and he gets dragged down there by Johnny Jolly. You know, I love the fact that they're they're pounding the ball to Kevin Smith. This is uh, this is one of the things we talked about. But at some point, you got to take shots to Calvin Johnson downfield. You're going to struggle with this tight coverage to, to move the ball in chunks through the passing game. I think the formula, pound the ball with Kevin Smith, take shots up top. Now, they're giving them double coverage, as we said, but I think you throw it up anyway. Let him try and make a play down here? You got to. I, I, I believe so. He's matched up one-on-one -on -one outside. With Al Harris right now, a, a great matchup, but I think that favors the Lions. Orlovsky now in second and goal, looking, throwing, and, well, the fan in row two had a decent shot at it. It's not Calvin Johnson, no. is it? No, <laughs> no, that was not. There was some sort of broken route there. Johnson went inside, the ball went outside. And Orlovsky taking a beating on this one. There's been great pressure by the Packers all day. That one hurt Dan Orlovsky. He, he was limping after that play. That's something that the this this up front front for the uh, Green Bay Packers has really suffered this year. They lost Corey Williams. KGB is gone via being waived. Colin Jenkins has been the biggest loss for them. They're doing a nice job today on the on the pressure hitting Orlovsky. Empty backfield now on third and goal. Orlovsky throwing a little fade, and the ball is caught by Johnson. It is a touchdown, and there it is, John Lynch, just the way you called it. Matched up on Al Harris, and 8-1 does it again. Well, that's how good he is. I think you're talking about Al Harris. You're talking one of the better corners in the league. I don't care if it's Charles Woodson. Right up here, you're going to see Calvin Johnson on Al Harris. I don't care if it's Al Harris. I don't care if it's Charles Woodson. I think, you know, Dick Knight train lane, you got to throw the ball to Calvin Johnson. He's your best player. you got to get big plays out of him, and you did right there. Great job by the Detroit Lions. Dan Orlowski puts up a beautiful ball, lets him go up and make a play. That's what he does best. And the crowd wants Mike McCarthy to challenge the call, saying that Johnson did not get both feet in bounds, but it sure looked like he kicked up enough dirt in the end zone there to warrant a touchdown. But I'm a, I, he's, he's deciding now. Harris is looking at it up on the jumbotron. It looks like they're going to let it slide. Look, his coach is upstairs, so keep that flag in your pocket. <laughs> Jason Hansen adds the PAT, and Detroit marches down the field. Apparently there is some sort of either flag on the play, a discussion by the referees, maybe an offsides by Green Bay. Let's see here. Offside, defense number 24. That five-yard penalty will be enforced on the kickoff. The try is good. Jarrett Bush offsides for the Packers, but Calvin Johnson with his 11th touchdown of the season and the Lions cut the deficit in half. Calvin Johnson with his 11th TD catch of the season ties him with Randy Moss and Anquan Bolden for the most in the league. And, well, they barely got it in neutral the first three drives, but finally got it going, John. Well, they got it going, and they got it going with the formula we talked about, running the ball effectively with Kevin Smith, and then eventually you got to take the shot up top. They did, and that tells you how good Calvin Johnson, the season he's had with the attention he's getting. He's a, he's a great player who's going to be a great player for years to come.
Hansen kicks it off toward Will Blackman. Takes it at the six. Tries to get away from would-be tacklers, but barely makes it up to the ten. And Aaron Rodgers and the Packers back on the field, up by seven. Starting center, Scott Wells still ailing with an injured ankle. Questionable return, and that's Mark Tauscher over on the sideline towards ACL a few weeks ago, so more reshuffling on that Packers O-line. Start out this drive at their own eight-yard line with Grant alone back. Rodgers hitting Grant out of the backfield. Dropped by Ernie Sims and Aaron Rodgers. Six for ten on the afternoon now, but... Those four incompletions, not really his fault, John. Well, Aaron Rodgers has been outstanding today. He's been outstanding all year. He's living in the great shadow of Brett Favre. You see the incompletions here, but those balls are on the mark. He's been on the mark all year. Mike McCarthy talking about Aaron Rodgers. He said he's a perfect fit for the offense. It's rare you can say that after one year. His best attribute is his accuracy and his decision-making. He's doing a great job at both of those today. 25-year-old just signed a six-year, $65 million extension earlier this season. Grant gets the first down, spins out of a tackle, and gets it up to the 28. Dragged down by the rookie Cliff Avro, third-round pick out of Purdue. Gain a 12, and this is more of the Ryan Grant that we saw last year, more of those explosive plays. You're exactly right, and you're starting to see, I, I'm sure this excites the Green Bay Packers, you're starting to see, see the Ryan Grant that was so good at the end of the year. You're going to see him come here, cut back, and then break those tackles. Early in the year, he's been going down. Now he's breaking those tackles. That's what makes Ryan Grant special, and he's starting to show signs of that. Now on first and 10, Rodgers looking downfield and has a man. It is Jermichael Finley, the rookie out of Texas. Caught a touchdown earlier. That one goes for 26 yards. You're going to see Jermichael Finley right here on Daniel Bullock's in coverage. And uh, you could you could feel sitting with Mike McCarthy with Aaron Rodgers. They wanted to get this guy a chance to make some plays today. They've known he's a great athlete all year. The production hasn't been there. You knew they were going to give him a shot. He's, he's, he's capitalizing on, on these opportunities today. Rodgers, I mean, glowing. You ask him about it, it was almost like you asked him about his first girlfriend. I mean, it was unbelievable. He really, he says this guy is a tremendous athlete. You know, we're starting to see it today, but when you when, when you hear Mike McCarthy compare him to Tony Gonzalez, when you hear Aaron right. Rodgers talk about the best hands on the team, the best athlete other than Charles Woodson on the team, that's a special player right there. And I think bright things to come from Jermichael Finley in the future. Well, he is just 21 years old. Left school after just two seasons and 76 catches down there in Austin. So now after uh, about no gain on first down. Rodgers staring at second and ten. Quick pitch to Grant. Tries to bounce it outside. Cuts it back up and gets inside the Detroit 40-yard line. Sean Cody, fourth-year man out of USC there to make the stop. This is a play much like the design on the Deshaun Wynn touchdown run. They have obviously seen something in the toss play, the ability to get outside against Detroit. You're going to see Donald Lee come, come down here in motion, get the contain, and Ryan Grant go outside. No one for Detroit's there. That's just fundamental things. Lee Bodden's job right there. Daniel Bullock's, they got to turn that ball back. It can't turn into gains like that. So now third and three, Deshaun Wynn, who had a 73-yard touchdown run in the first quarter, has checked in next to Rodgers, operating out of the shotgun. Loading it downfield, looking for his man, and is incomplete. It was Finley again who was asking for an interference call. Dexter Wynn on the coverage. I think that shows you how strong they feel about this guy. I keep talking about it, but you've got Greg Jennings, you've got Donald Driver. They're clearly featuring Jamarcus, Jermichael Finley here today, giving him opportunity. That's one I bet he wishes he would have had. Expects himself to have. All five of Rodgers' incompletions have been in the hands of Packers receivers, or in this case, tight end. So now Jeremy Tapinos on to punt it away for the second time. Maybe on Quezon, standing at his own 10. Kayshawn's going to let that one bounce instead of catching it. 
And it dies at about the eight. So the Lions defense does its job. Detroit will now try and score a second straight touchdown on O. Along with producer Chuck McDonald, our director Greg Scopatoni, and the rest of our fine Fox crew. Green Bay up 14-7 midway through the second quarter. Dan Orlovsky handing it off to the rookie Kevin Smith. Has a hole, makes a couple of nice moves, gets it up close to the first down. Tackled by Nick Collins. Sam Gash talked about the vision of Kevin Smith, and he's doing an outstanding job showing that today. You're going to see nice blocking by Moore Norris, the, the fullback right there. Kevin Smith goes on a nice, nice gain, showing that great vision and running ability. This Packers defense just 26th against the run. They have had major issues from day one. A ball tipped and incomplete. Intended for Calvin Johnson. Charles Woodson right there to get it done. Great coverage by Charles Woodson right here. Here's what makes him so special. He rides Calvin Johnson. Ooh, had an opportunity at another one right there. Nice play by Charles Woodson. Well, you talked about at the top of the game trying to get Calvin Johnson the ball at least five times a quarter. Got to take some chances, but you want to see it a little bit more down the field, right? Well, they're going to him, but I, I think I think you're right. You got to take the shots down the field. Green Bay's coverage is going to be tight underneath. Hard, short, the small windows to get the ball in. Third and two. Smith is going to work his way for the first down. Gets it up to the 20. Nice patience out of the rookie. Brandon Chiller there on the stop. You're going to see nice push by the left side of the line. Owens the tight end. Backus and Manny Ramirez there. Manny Ramirez pulls. Nice running by Kevin Smith. Dominic Riola, the center. Eighth-year man out of Nebraska, also pulling on the play and making a nice little block. So Detroit starting to get into a rhythm offensively, something they could not do last week. Quick hit to Johnson. Gets it up to the 26, and this is something that Rod Marinelli and Dan Orlovsky told us that they would do. Yeah, Dan Orlovsky in particular talked about that, motioning Calvin Johnson into a stack. That's called a smoke route. You, you show the, you, you, you just throw a ball behind the line of scrimmage to Calvin Johnson, let him use his superior athletic ability, get yards, get it to him right now, and there you go, five-yard pickup. Johnson, fifth in the league. In receiving yards, now tied for first with 11 touchdowns. This is Smith. He has got nowhere to go. A blitzing Charles Woodson there to bottle him up along with Aaron Campman. Great job by Aaron Campman right there. He's been a standout for this team for a long time. He's known for his pass rush ability, but he's a complete player. He plays the run extremely well. It's easy to play the run extremely well when you're unblocked. <laughs> Great play by Campman. Well, Campman, a two-time Pro Bowler, but this has been an issue all season long for Mike McCarthy in this defensive line. Just not enough guys making plays. Well, last year, it was the strength of the team. They could bring eight guys at you that could start for most teams in the NFL. Be a free agency trade, guys getting hurt, Colin Jenkins. They've really struggled. Campman's been out there on his own a lot. They're playing better today. Third and eight, Orlovsky looking downfield. Has a man, it's Johnson again. Has a little room. And he gets shoved out of bounds by Nick Collins, but not before he gets into Green Bay territory. Broke the tackle of Aaron Rouse and picks up 36. You're going to see Calvin Johnson come in motion. They're doing a nice job moving around. Orlowski gets great, great protection. Has the time for that play to develop. Nice nice execution by the Detroit Lions there. First and 10 for the 42. Well, Johnson, a guy, if you get him in any sort of space, look out. If he's even at 6'5", he can run. You're going to have trouble tackling, tackling him. He's a big, strong guy that can run. He's not going to be tackled in space one-on-one -on -one very, very often. Well, Smith gets tackled after very little gain right there. Brandon Schiller in on the stop. And let's give Rod Marinelli some credit once again. I mean, his team, they come in 0-15. They're staring history right in the face. Just like that, they're down 14-0. He won't allow these guys to quit. And I guess more importantly, the players won't allow themselves. No, he won't. But I think it's a direct reflection of the leadership of Rod Marinelli. The fact that these guys are playing as hard as they are after being 0-15, that's a reflection of Rod. He won't let them get down. He's constantly encouraging them, and that's the kind of leader he is. 
That's Moore Norris, the fullback in motion. Smith again gets dragged down by Colin Cole, the backup defensive lineman. Cole, a guy that was waived early in his career by these same Detroit Lions, now getting a little payback. This has been a problem for, for Detroit throughout the course of the season. You're going to see Colin Cole right here come in and beat Peter Mint, Peter Mint and makes a nice tackle there. But getting themselves in these long third, third down situations, you, you'd like to be in third and five or less, you have a much higher chance of converting. They, these third eights are tough to convert. Or in this case, third and ten. Orlovsky looking downfield. Ball in the air, and it is dropped. Off the hands of Colbert. Off the midst of Nick Collins. And incomplete. Kerry Colbert's got to make that catch right there. Orlovsky fires a strike right to him. He made a big fourth down conversion earlier on that third down. you got to catch that ball. Well, Collins had it right in his mitts as well. Six interceptions on the season for the first-time Pro Bowler, and Kerry Colbert trying to figure out what went wrong there. And Nick Collins, too. He, uh, he would, he's trying to keep pace with Charles Woodson. He could have had seven right there with him, right there. <laughs> Harris gets it away, and that one is saved beautifully by the Lions. Adam Jennings was there to bat it back into the field of play, and... It gets killed at the five-yard line. So an outstanding play by the Lions special teams. Beautiful play by Jennings right here. <laughs> Leaping up, keeping his feet in the field of play, knocking it back. Great job by Nick Harrison. A better job by Adam Jennings pinning the Packers back. Well, if there has been a strength to this Lions team, it has been the punter Nick Harris, the kicker Jason Hansen. Both have had outstanding seasons. So I suppose if you're looking for positives this year, those that's two of them. We still count kickers and punters as players, right, John? Uh, I guess so. Okay, <laughs> when you're talking right. them for the strikes of the team, you're hurting. <laughs> so the pack now backed up at its own six-yard line. Little play action to Grant. Rodgers looking downfield, has some time, hits a man. It is Jennings getting it up to the 30. Gain of 24. Great job by the Packers throwing the ball backed up and a great job by Greg Jennings. Getting the separation and look at the protection here that they give Aaron Rodgers. He gets back there. He's got time to look left, go back right to Greg Jennings and fires a strike. That's the thing people I don't think quite get. They're so used to Brett Favre slinging the ball around. This guy puts some juice on that ball. Serious RPMs off the right arm of Aaron Rodgers. This time being chased out of the pocket. A flag is down. Ball is complete to Jermichael Finley yet again. Shoved out of bounds by Ernie Sims. Holding offense number 71. 10-yard penalty. Repeat first down. That is the rookie Josh Sitton out of Central Florida. He actually played tackle blocking for Lions running back Kevin Smith. See Josh sitting right there as Aaron Rodgers breaks it. It's when he, when Aaron Rodgers breaks the pocket that Josh Sitton holds on. Big mistake for Sitton, the rookie. It was Langston Moore, the fourth-year man out of South Carolina, drawing the penalty on that play. So now first and 20 for the Packers. We approach the two-minute warning. Rodgers again looking downfield, checking it down to Grant, who is tackled after a five-yard gain by Ernie Sims. And we have arrived at the two-minute warning. Packers up seven, trying to get something going. Bad news for the Packers secondary, already a little depleted with the injury to Atari Bigby. His replacement, Aaron Rouse, return is questionable with an injured knee as he was just carted off. Aaron Rodgers hoping his defense doesn't step back onto the field until the third quarter. Second and 15 at the two-minute warning. Pressured, and Rodgers is dropped for the first time today. It's the rookie Cliff Averill with his fifth sack of the season. And Cliff Averill's the guy they're excited about in, in, in Detroit. They feel like you're going to see him here working on Chad Clifton. He keeps going, keeps that motor going. They feel like this guy's a guy they can build on defensively. 
Averill just working right around the former Pro Bowler Chad Clifton, who has struggled this season. Now, Detroit did not call a timeout. They have two remaining. So here, third and 15, Rodgers out of the shotgun. Sean Wynn in the backfield. Rodgers, a quick hitter. The driver gets it up to the 35, and he is dropped. And let's see if Detroit elects to use one of its timeouts. No. Well, it, is that... Is that a little surprising? Yeah, I think. I mean, <laughs> let's go. You know. I think you, you made a big stop. You call your timeouts. I think you use you use two of them right there. For whatever reason, they're not using them. I, that doesn't make sense to me. Well, to that, I mean, it sounds like you're a little bit scared of putting your offense in a position to almost succeed. Exactly. You know, I mean, here you're not leaving them with any time. I mean, Campanos is just going to let it dwindle down. Finally, they snap it away with 33 to go in the opening half. This one kind of a sidewinder. Kaysan's going to let this one hop inside the 15, inside the 10, and you can forget about it now. I think that's a missed opportunity for the Lions right there. Well, questionable right there by Rod Marinelli to not use his timeouts. He's going to keep him in his pocket after a 55-yard punt by Campanos, the longest of his career. Hey, don't forget, coming up at halftime, it is the Visa Halftime Report. Kurt Terry, Howie Michael, and Jimmy as well. All sorts of important playoff implications on the line. You've got Carolina trying to take care of business down in New Orleans. Chicago still trying to stick around. They're struggling down in Houston. Minnesota and the Giants. Highlights and scores and analysis coming your way on the Visa Halftime Report. And the Lions handed off to Kevin Smith. He gets dropped by Brady Papinga. A loss of one. And now it looks like Green Bay is going to call a timeout. Yeah, they want a shot at it. They're stopping it right away. They got 17 seconds, two more timeouts after this. They want an opportunity at least to maybe block a punt. I think Detroit really missed an opportunity. You do a great job getting a stop. You've got it over a minute left if you use both tight ends there, or both timeouts, and why not? <laughs> and if you're one of those offensive players that's on that Detroit sideline, aren't you thinking, okay, there's, there's a minute 15 to go, you know, there's a minute 20. Let's stop the clock. Yeah. Give us a chance to maybe put one of the best kickers in position to cut into the deficit. I think so, definitely. But I, I think Rod Marnelli's probably thinking he sold to, the, sold to his team that if he can keep this game close, we've got a good chance. The Packers have, str have struggled to finish. But I think right there, you got you got to take your shot. you got to take those timeouts, get your offense on the field, and, and give it a go. Second and 11, it is Smith again who's been – Busy this afternoon. Picks up about four. Aaron Campman on the stop. And another timeout by the Packers. The Packers are going to have a chance to put everybody up there, block this punt, or Blackman's been extremely effective on the returns. I think two for touchdowns this year. They're going to give themselves a chance, and I think that's the way you got to play this game, particularly when you aren't going to the playoffs. It's not like you can lose anything. Well, once again, Mike McCarthy told us at 5-10 and 10, that this is actually a good team with a bad record. Do you, do you agree with that assessment? I do. I, I do. You, you look at a lot of the things they've done as a team. They've done statistically. Now, ultimately, to be a good team, you've got to find a way to win those games. But they're the youngest team in the league. Last year, they probably overachieved being 13-3 and three this year, but I, I think they've underachieved. But I think looking forward, they've got a good foundation. Well, this is Smith again on third down, trying to work his way toward the first, but he gets chopped down by Johnny Jolly, who's been all over the place. And Packers are going to use their final timeout and try and block a punt or get a great return, as you said. So at least that's a uh, that's good clock management. Now, once again, it's something to keep in mind here. If it is a poor punt by Nick Harris that you can call for a fair catch and get what's called a free kick. Have you ever been involved in one of those? Never been involved, but, uh, you know, everybody's very aware of that. Mason Crosby does have a big leg, you know, and, and uh, you know, who knows? You've seen stranger things. Well, here's what it would look like. I mean, Lions can't rush him, can't use a T or anything, but, you know, that's what it's going to look like if we do have a free kick. Once again, Blackman would have to call for the fair catch. He cannot advance it. Well, Harris does get it away, and uh, they call for the fair catch. Oh, he caught it on his bum! 
Wow, that could have been disastrous right there for the Packers. Instead, it's double zeros up on the clock, and Blackman gets a little laugh out of it as well. <laughs> great job by Nick Harris, not giving an opportunity for a return or the free kick. And a great job by the 0-15 Lions, who were down 14-0, less than 14 minutes into this one. They get a nice touchdown toss from Orlovsky to Calvin Johnson, and they're, they're in this thing. They are in this thing. They've, they've... See Will Blackman there go down on the slippery turf here, but a nice job on the catch by Blackman. Now, it looks like the Packers might actually try and get a free kick out of this regardless. It looks like the refs are going to bring the players back on the field. Fair, fair catch. Time ran out on the play, but by rule, Green Bay is permitted a fair catch kick. So here we go. Once again, because they had called for a fair catch and made it, Mason Crosby can line it up from 69 yards out. <laughs> this be fun. <laughs> I mean, let's go for it. Why not, right? Why not? Why not? It, you know, we saw him in the pregame. Now, I, I'll tell you, this is the direction that Mason Crosby talking to him in pregame. He's kicking into the wind here. But the kid's got a big leg. Why not give it a go? Good coaching, I think, by Mike McCarthy, giving themselves an opportunity. Well, once again, let's show you what was happening in the pregame. Well, that one's from way deep. And he ended up about eight yards short. And that's from 75 yards away. So this one, we'll get, we'll get a chance to see something fun. You, you don't get to see this all that often. No, you don't. But this is situational football. That's what good coaches do. They put them their, their teams. They go through every situation. I'm sure they practice this. And the good thing, Mike McCarthy wasn't too happy with Mason Crosby after last week because he felt that kick came out a little low. You can't block this thing. <laughs> You're talking about the 38-yarder at the end of regulation in Chicago that would have won it. So there's a couple things to keep in mind. You're looking at this formation. The Lions, they have to treat it almost like it's a kickoff. They cannot try and pressure the kick, but they can return it. They do have the opportunity to return. <laughs> so here we go. Mason Crosby from 69 yards out on the free kick. The crowd here at Lambeau's loving this. That is uh, Matt Flynn, the rookie out of LSU, doing the holding. What do you think, Lynch? Is he get it close? Well, you know, he's going into the wind. He, you know, Mason said right before the game, this is the way the, the, the wind blows in your face. But it's got a chance. <laughs> oh, it's just <laughs> short. Wow, that ended up about three yards short, but an outstanding effort by Mason Crosby. So the free kick from 69 yards out oh. is just that short so a little fun at the end of the first half Packers lead it 14-7 Visa halftime report after back at the start of the second half at Lambeau Field the Packers took an early 14-0 lead then a touchdown toss from Dan Orlovsky to Calvin Johnson cut the deficit in half take a look at the first half stats Packer ground game getting it done this afternoon John Lynch they are they're running the ball effectively most most of, the, most of the credit goes to Deshaun Wynn on the long run there, but Ryan Grant is starting to show signs of the back that he think that the Green Bay Packers thinks he is. And uh, the Packers off to a great start. Aaron Rodgers is sharp. Detroit, on the other hand, is keeping it close. I think he, Rod Marinelli sold to his guys, keep this game close going in. Everybody knows about Green Bay's struggle finishing close games. The Lions want to keep this thing close. I think they got to continue to take shots downfield to Calvin Johnson. They're doing a good job in the run game. You've got to take the shots downfield to your best player. Well, Calvin Johnson has caught four passes this afternoon. They've thrown to him seven times so far, so at least they're they're efforting, as we like to say in the television business. Mason Crosby kicks it off, and a great start for the Lions as Avion Kaysan watches it go out of bounds. He'll start with great field position. Ball's going to go all the way up to the 40. Well, once again, Chris Rose joined by the nine-time Pro Bowl safety John Lynch, who just retired this season. And somebody wants to get back on the field. Let's see. First of all, show sleeveless up here today, folks. <laughs> Ten-degree wind chill, my man. Sleeveless. Are you insane? I've, I've been in Lambeau Field many times. Never wore sleeves. So why start now? <laughs> you played in one of the coldest games ever here, right? I think the second coldest game in Lambeau history. Yeah. It's a lot colder in the booth, though. Yeah. <laughs> Don't let him fool you, folks. He was wearing a jacket earlier. 
Dan Orlowski on the first play of the second half gets it out to his tight end, John Owens, who gets nailed by Brady Papinga. Lynch felt that one all the way up here, <laughs> sleeveless and all. Nice call by Detroit right there. They've been running the ball on first down, fake the run, go to the bootleg. Orlowski actually had Calvin Johnson downfield, chose to check it down. Well, here are your offensive leaders, Kevin Smith, just averaging two and a half yards per carry so far, but he has hit half the century mark so far. Second and eight now. Smith gets it. Up the middle for about five or so. Aaron Campman on the tackle. Seen a lot of success with Kevin Smith and the Detroit Lions in the cutback game. You're going to see Steven Peterman. Uh-huh, yeah. yeah. Uh -huh, <laughs> you caught me. Back on. <laughs> Who's the rookie? Who's the rookie? It's it's the old setup. You're probably one of those guys that went out and got turkeys on Thanksgiving Day as well, your rookie year. You fell for that one, too. Look at this. You get one dressed. Now you, oh, tough guy. Me, tough guy. All right, so here we go. Third and two. Orlovsky out of the shotgun, puts Johnson in motion, and he hits Calvin Johnson. Tackled quickly there by Al Harris, but not before the Lions move the chains again. Yeah, nice job by, Orl by Orlowski and then Calvin Johnson right there converting on third third down. I think the key to that, you get yourself in third and shorts. In third and shorts, it's easy to convert. You get in those third and seven pluses. Those are tough situations against this Packer secondary to convert. You like the way they're using Calvin Johnson today? I do. I mean, they're mixing underneath. I think they still need to take more shots downfield. Every time they've de gone downfield, they've been successful. Whether he's covered or not, the guy's going to make plays. I think they got to continue to force the ball downfield to him. Well, Smith's opportunity to make a play. He cuts outside. There is a flag on the play as Nick Collins pushes him out of bounds. Let's see who they're going to get. Initial indications are it might be on John Standiford. If so, that would wipe out a 19-yard run. Ed Hockley. Indeed, it was Standiford and wipes out a big chunk play, as the Lions like to call it. You can see Standiford outside doing a nice job, working hard against Woodson. But right there, as Woodson tries to escape, they catch him catching the jersey. And uh, that's a that's a big, big, big loss for the uh, Detroit Lions. A big game by Kevin Smith, brought back by the holding by Stanford. Well, it's now going to be first and nine. They're going to mark it back from the spot of the foul. So I suppose that's the good news for the Lions on the play. That is Jerome Felton, the rookie out of Furman toting the rock for just the second time this season, and the Lions told us this is a young guy they want to get a look at. Well, he was the starting fullback at the beginning of the year. They brought in Norris, who's done a great job. He hasn't been able to get his job back. He's a guy who in college at Furman carried the ball a little bit. They wanted to see him. They thought, in, particularly if it was going to be the inclement weather, slippery foot, and he's a guy that could pound the Green Bay Packers who have struggled stopping the run on defense this year. And if they get anywhere near the goal line, look for Felton, who scored 63 rushing touchdowns in his career. Second and five, and Kevin Smith back into the ball game. Orlovsky, little play action, and he's looking downfield for Johnson, who's working on Harris. A little pushing and shoving, and no call by the referee. And it looked like Johnson might have gotten away with one there. Yeah, I think he did, but I think it was uncatchable. Tremendous job by Al Harris right here. You're going to see Orlovsky break the pocket. Look at Al Harris right there. He's not going for that double move. He knew they were taking a shot downfield. That's a veteran move by Al Harris. And, and a tremendous play. Looked like maybe their feet got tangled, and that's why there was no call. Orlovsky wanted it for his team. Al Harris wanted it for his squad. No call, and so it's third and five. That's what I dealt with for 15 years. They never call it on offense. <laughs> Not once? Not once. That, that tight end would get you too, wouldn't he? Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. Thought so. Avion Kaysan in the backfield next to Orlovsky, working out of the gun on third. Pressured. And ball short, intended for Casey Fitzsimmons, the tight end. So now on fourth and five, it looks like Nick Harris is going to come on and punt. We've seen him try for it on fourth down a couple of times. Here it's manageable. Why no decision to go for it here? Well, I think you're fourth and less than five, you go for it. You're right at fourth and five. I, I think this is the smart call right now. You're playing with the Packers. 
you know, some people may say, heck, you got nothing to lose. But I think you're in the game. If they can keep it close, they feel good about their chances. Harris boots it away. Blackman calling for the fair catch at his own nine. And so we will see Aaron Rodgers and the Packers offense for the first time in the second half. Ten degree wind chill at Lambeau Field. Obviously somebody didn't get his shirt for Christmas this year. Jason Spitz remains in the game at center for the injured Scott Wells. And Grant. Submarine. And the ball is loose, and it looks like maybe the Lions have recovered. They have indeed. A great job on this play by Calvin Pearson coming down into the box and just putting his helmet right on the ball. Ryan Grant's got a hold on the ball, but great job by Calvin Pearson. Hey, he gets the recovery as well. Gets the recovery right there. Rod Marinelli talked about how much he, he, he loves this guy, Calvin Pearson. He, he was brought in here really to be a fourth safety, a special teams contributor. Due to injuries, he's had to play. And uh, he's done a great job. Here comes the challenge by, uh, by Mike McCarthy. Well, we're going to have to see whether or not he was down because Grant went head over heels. Now, the question is, you know, was, was the helmet down? Was the ball coming out? And that's what McCarthy wants him to take a look at. Now, if the helmet hits on the ground, I don't know. John, what do you see? You see the ball coming out? I think the ball's coming loose there. You, you see him struggling for the ball there. If his head were down and Ed Hockley said. So Ed Hockley's going to peek under the hood. The Packers with the challenge. The Green Bay Packers have challenged the fumble by Ryan Grant, the recovery by Calvin Pearson. Ed Hockley's taking a look. The ball is loose in the runner's hand before his head hits the ground. Therefore, the ruling in the field stands as called. It was a fumble recovered by Detroit. And Green Bay is charged with their first time out. John Lynch, as you said, the ball was loose before his head hit the ground. Yeah, you're going to see Ryan Grant go here. Now, if his head had hit and he had control of the ball it's the Packers ball but the ball as you're going to see right in there I think it's coming loose there's movement and remember it had to be conclusive evidence to overturn it I, I believe the ball was was uh, was moving certainly not enough to overturn it so what did we say at the beginning of the game Rod Marinelli said please let's get some turnovers well here you've got one and now you're at the 11 yard line that's Calvin Johnson in motion Smith up the gut for maybe two Johnny Jolly, a big afternoon for him with the stop. We've called Johnny Jolly's name a lot today. They've struggled in the middle. This is a team that had Colin jo Jenkins, who was a disruptive force. They've really missed him due to injury. Johnny Jolly stepping up and playing the type of football they've expected out of him all year. And Ryan Pickett, they're doing a nice job on the defensive front today. So now the football inside the 10 of the Green Bay Packers. Johnson and Stanford lined up to the left for Orlovsky. That's Stanford in motion. Flags and a false start on Detroit. Jeff Backus was moving early there. Full side offense, number 76. Five yard penalty, second down. Yeah, the eight year vet out of Michigan, the first ever pick of the Matt Millen regime. Remember last time they were in this situation about the same part of the field? This is when they went to Calvin Johnson, took a shot up top. This is an area in the red zone where you can get one-on-one -on -one matchups. I'd throw it up to Calvin Johnson right here. Ball pushed back to the 14-yard line now. Three receivers set for Orlowski working out of the shotgun. Orlovsky hits Johnson, gets in the middle of the field, and he gets it down to the goal line. Is it a touchdown? It is! Alvin Johnson with his second touchdown of the afternoon as he breaks the tackle of Nick Collins, the Pro Bowler, for the 14-yard score. 
The Lions have done a nice job. You're going to see Calvin Johnson come in motion. You've got to constantly move a player of his magnitude so that they can't double cover you. They get him the ball in space. He makes Nick Collins a Pro Bowl player miss a tackle, gets in for the touchdown. Great job by the Lions capitalizing on the turnover forced by Calvin Pearson. Pearson with the hit and the recovery. Johnson with his second touchdown. Hanson. We are tied. So we might be 0-15, say the Lions, but we got 14 and you got 14. All square at Lambeau. The law firm of Pearson and Johnson filling some hours on Sunday. Calvin Pearson with the hit and the fumble recovery, setting up Calvin Johnson with his second touchdown of the afternoon from 14 yards out. And now we are tied at 14. Now, I talked to Joe Barry, the Lions defensive coordinator. He spoke, as I just mentioned earlier, Calvin Pearson was really brought in here to be a force safety, an insurance safety, and a special teams play, uh, player. They said he's probably playing better defense than anyone on the entire Lions defense right now. It's now so now a pumped-up Lions team gets a great kickoff from Hanson Black and takes it five yards deep in the end zone and gets back to the 20-yard line, and that's where he is dragged down. So the, now let's, let, let's focus a little bit, John, on... Aaron Rodgers and Green Bay. Mentally, they're facing an 0-15 team. Yes, they've had problems of their own because they've lost five in a row, but you're thinking you don't want to be the one that's going to lose to the 0-15 squad. You're absolutely right. I've been in these situations before. As we talked, you don't want to be the team for the Lions' sake to go 0-16. You certainly don't want to be the Packers, the team that let them go 1-15, but not the way you want to end the season. Green Bay's got to make a statement right here on this drive. Let's see if they give it to Ryan Grant. Of course, he fumbled on his last touch. Here, a little play action. Rodgers is going to get dropped again. It is Dwayne White. Six and a half sacks now leads the Lions for the sixth-year man out of Louisville. Dwayne White has been nicked all, all day, all, all week long. You're going to see Dwayne White coming off the corner here against College. Runs a little game, comes inside. Great job by Dwayne White. He's been slowed down by a calf all, all, all week long, but showed a nice burst there and then finishes the deal on the sack of Rodgers. And let's remember, Darren College is getting his first start of the year over at right tackle, part of that reshuffled offensive line for Mike McCarthy. Now Rodgers is just going to dump it off to Grant. Gets it back up to the original line of scrimmage, where he is tackled by Paris Lennon. And I got to tell you, Lambeau Field, which is one of your favorite places to play on the road because you love the energy and how the fans are into it, it, it it's quiet. Dare I say we're almost at a Lions home game. Yeah, That's how a, quiet it is. <laughs> it's a little quiet right there. <laughs> Around here, the, you know, they got to get back momentum on this drive. Uh, Detroit has seized the momentum. The Packers' job right now to get some momentum back. Packers two for six on third down conversion. Rodgers out of the shotgun has Deshaun Wynn in the backfield. Rodgers looking deep downfield for Jennings. Works his way back to the ball and gets it in front of Daniel Bullets. A great adjustment by Jennings. And the Packers get the big play they so desperately needed. Nice job by Rodgers right there. He gets en enough protection to sit back and throw the ball. But give your number one receiver an opportunity to catch the ball. Throw it up there, even if he's covered. You got Greg Jennings on a receiver. He'll go get the ball. Great job by Greg Jennings. Great job by Aaron Rodgers, giving him the opportunity to make a big play. And there's that momentum that we talked about Green Bay needing. And for Jennings, his eighth catch of 40-plus yards this season, that goes for 47. Rodgers hits driver, stop for no gain. A little pushing and shoving. Let's see if any flags are going to fly this time. It looked like Ernie Sims got in a serious pop. And there's a whole bunch of players involved in this one. There's another late shove. And another one. I'll tell you. The intensity ometer, if that's a word, has gone up significantly. Yeah, who says these guys aren't playing for anything? All right, let's see exactly what happened as Driver caught the pass in front of Lee Bodden. A little Ooh. bit of shove from Driver, push from Bodden. Alan Barber gets involved in it. 
It was borderline better than the Manny Pacquiao, Oscar De La Hoya bout there. <laughs> Usually the second push draws the penalty. We have about four or five there, and I think a good job by the officials. They, they understand that these guys are playing with energy. It's a divisional game. Even if it's at the end of the year, neither team going to the playoffs, she's seeing great emotion from both teams. Fired the pack crowd up for sure. Well, the crowd trying to get back into it, deliver a little energy. Empty backfield for Rodgers on second and ten. Rodgers looking and misfiring. First incompletion after he had missed, had connected on six in a row. The Packers felt that this five wide look could give the Detroit Lions trouble. The Detroit Lions admitted they, they struggle in space. That's a great way right there. He had the matchup. He had Greg Jennings on a safety, Daniel Bullock's. A little pressure there by the left side, Dwayne White. And that, that doesn't let Aaron Rodgers throw the ball where he wants to throw it. Well, let's be honest. The Lions really don't have enough quality guys in their secondary to compete with that kind of formation, they do don't. they? They got Calvin Pearson playing the nickel. He's really a safety. We've talked about him. He's doing a great job in there. But really, not, not a true nickel defender in this league. Well, third and ten, and Rodgers just gets the snap off. Had to, hold, had to hold it a little bit longer than he wanted. Donald Lee just could not get his footing. Rodgers got pressured and incomplete. Looks like they're going for it here. Well, here is the pressure from Detroit. Langston Moore there to drop Aaron Rodgers, and it does look like Mike McCarthy's going to say, you know what? Let's go for it. it. It would be right around a 50, a 51-yard field goal attempt by Mason Crosby if he'd wanted to go for it. I think maybe this speaks to a little bit of Mike, Comp Mike McCarthy's confidence or lack thereof in Mason Crosby after last week in Chicago. Give, give Aaron Rodgers a chance to make a play here. Rodgers looking deep downfield, and the ball is caught by Jones and then dropped. A big hit there by Ramsey Robinson, and there's a late flag as Robinson, it looked like, started drawing with Jones. Just simply can't do that. Ramsey Robinson makes a great play, knocks the ball out, but they're going to call him for taunting right here. He gets in his face after the play. It's going to be first down for Green Bay after a great stop for the Detroit Lions. And Rod Marinelli. After the play was over, after the play was over, taunting. By the defense, number 38. It's Green Bay. It's the fourth ball. The foul happened after the play was over. Therefore, it's the fourth ball. A 15-yard penalty will be enforced against Detroit. It will be their ball, first and 10. All right, so it is a dumb penalty from Ramsey Robinson, a second-year man out of Alabama. The good news is post-possession. Possession had already changed over, so... At least Detroit will hang on to the ball. Let's watch the good part. Ramsey Robinson drives on James Jones and just gets his hand in there, makes a nice strip. You can't do that part. That, that, that's, that's selfish on his part. That hurts his team. Fortunately, it was after the play and didn't give the Packers the opportunity to have the ball in the red zone. Now, the question is, if you're on 15, how much taunting should you be doing? You shouldn't be doing any taunt. You should play the game of football. Rod Marinelli, more than anybody, believes in respect in the game. I'm sure right now he's going to be in Ramsey Robinson's ear saying, nice play, but let's not let's not go there. Oh, His really? teammates are doing it for him. Yeah. So the Lions, after the defense holds, taking over at its own 18. Smith across the 20, up to the 24. Kevin Smith dragged down by Michael Montgomery. Nice gain right there with Kevin Smith and the Lions. One of the things I'd like to see them do, on first down, we're getting in this pattern, run on first down, run on second down, throw the ball deep on first down. They had Calvin Johnson one-on-one -on, -one on Al Harris. Uh, Green Bay understands the pattern. They're going to stack the box with eight guys on first and second down. Third down, they're going to give them help. Go after them on first down deep. Well, Smith, the lone setback on second and four. That's Casey Fitzsimmons, the tight end in motion. And Smith again, Barry. Montgomery gets him again. And a flag on the play as well. Dan Orlovsky is signaling it's against Green Bay. 
holding defense, number 90. Five-yard penalty and automatic first down. That's Colin Cole back up defensive tackle with the rare holding call against the defensive line. I think that's a good call. You, you see Colin Cole holding Stephen Peter, Peterman right there on the play. Nice job by the umpire. You're going to see Colin Cole right there. Watch at the end of the play, Stephen Peterson, there, him grab Stephen Peterman, held, holding him up, not allowing him to get up to the second level. i got to tell you, that wasn't much of a hold. No, I, from the end zone view, you could see it. He, you know, and The NFL's had an emphasis on that the last couple of years, calling these these guys from holding up. Now, sometimes that's their job, keep them off the linebackers, but when you do it too obvious, they're going to get called. So now first down, and Smith juggles the ball, but retains possession, gets drilled out of bounds by A.J. Hawk. Smith with a career-best 25th carry on the afternoon. 25 carries, they're wearing them out. Now you're starting to Green Bay's starting to see the pattern that we're seeing running on first and second down. They're starting to stack the box. I'm telling you, the, the, the shot downfield is going to be there to Calvin Johnson if they just take it. Well, that's Josh Sitton who knows all about what Kevin Smith can do. Of course, he blocked for Smith down at Central Florida. Second and eight. Orlovsky hitting Johnson again for a first down in front of Brandon Schiller. Orlowski talked about these stack formations. It's a it's a way again to get Calvin Johnson to get the, the, the pressure off him, get the double coverage off him. That time they bring Standiford in motion. It opens up Calvin Johnson underneath, gives him a nice window. They they, they, they have a nice conversion on for a first down. Well, they have thrown to Johnson 11 times this afternoon, connected seven times for 87 yards and a couple of scores. Another First down for the Lions, Orlowski on a bootleg, looking downfield, and the ball is caught and then dropped. That's John Owens, the tight end. Got his fingertips on it before it was knocked away. I like that call. We talk about the pattern running on first down. Fake the run to Kevin Smith. You're going to attract the defense. Orlowski gives Owens a chance to catch the ball. Would have been a tough catch, but need to make that one. You can see the confidence growing on the Detroit sideline and also with this young offense engineered by fourth-year pro Dan Orlovsky. Smith with his 26th carry of the day for about two yards. That'll leave him third and long as A.J. Hawk makes the play. Nice play there by, by the front seven of, of Detroit, of, of Green Bay. You know, one of the reasons Detroit has an opportunity, Kevin Smith's a good back, but one of the reasons they can run the ball effectively, Calvin Johnson draws so much attention. He, it's hard to get that eighth guy in the box. Smith continues to get stronger, though, as you see this game goes on. He's a guy that's averaged 4.2 yards per carry throughout his rookie season. Replaced here on third down by Avion Kaysan. No Rudy Johnson today. He is inactive for the Lions. Orlovsky looking downfield for Standiford, and the ball is dropped as Charlie Pepra had it in his paws. So the Lions will have to boot it away. <laughs> One thing that that little uh, shoving match did, it fired this crowd up. The crowd was kind of dead. The, the, the Lambeau faithful are back and loud and noisy. And we'll see if Green Bay can capitalize it on this drive. Nick Harris on to punt it away to Will Blackman. Once again, two punt returns for touchdowns this season. The third-year man out of Boston College. Harris gets away a beauty. Blackman lets it bounce into the end zone. So tied at 14 with under five to go in the third as Aaron Rodgers gets ready to go back to work. Things heating up at Chile Lambeau Field. The 0-15 Detroit Lions, they were down 14-0 in the first quarter. They have come back to tie it with 4.22 to go in the third. Ryan Grant. A big run 
Gets it up to the 40 and dragged down. I don't think he ever touched his knee. Well, Grant is still going, and he is into the end zone. Now, the referees look like originally they said he was down, but Grant kept going. And Hockley's getting together with his crew right now, talking about it. And this is key, whatever call they make on the field. Very important. Wow. John, what do you think? Does he look down? He, he, I, I think he's on the ground there. I think his backside's on the ground. But they're going to go. I think they're going to take it to replay. Touchdown. Well, Ed Hockley's crew says touchdown. Rod Marinelli says red flag pronto. They, have, they didn't waste any time with the challenge. That's the quickest flag I've seen, and I think rightly so. I think this one's going to come back. Remember, it has to be conclusive. I think that replay was fairly conclusive, though. So if it stands, you're looking at an 80-yard touchdown. Now, remember, Ryan Grant's hand can be down, but any other part of his body touches the ground, he's down. Can't quite see on that angle, but I think on the other angle, you can see his backside touch the ground. So it is ruled an 80-yard touchdown challenged by Rod Marinelli and the Lions. Was he down? We'll find out. An 80-yard touchdown run by Ryan Grant under review. Was any part of his body down John Lynch? I think right there. Or he was down by contact at the 41-yard line. It's first down, and there are no charge timeouts. It has to be conclusive, and I think it was there. Smart play by Ryan Grant, though. Get up, keep running, make him go under the booth, under the tent, and make the call. Great acting job as well by Grant. You want to get all those great performances in before the end of the year so they can qualify for Oscar <laughs> nominations, of course, in the spring. But a great job by him. I mean, that's what you're yeah. taught to do. Keep going if you don't think you're down. And even without the touchdown, nice gain. The Packers are seeing a lot of good signs. They're starting to get those 20-plus runs right there from Ryan Grant. Now, that one 21 instead of 80. So Grant up to 76 yards on the afternoon, averaging almost seven yards per carry. That's Donald Lee, the tight end, in motion. They'll try Grant again, up to about the 45-yard line, dragged down by Calvin Pearson. I see a nice job by Calvin Pearson coming off the slot in the nickel on a nickel blitz. That's really what he is. He's a safety. They bring him on the run blitz. Calvin Pearson makes a nice play on, on Ryan Grant. Well, this is a defense that tried to build a little bit up front in recent years with some draft picks in Averill and Llewellyn. Llewellyn and those guys were drafted this year. Their secondary obviously hurting with some serious injuries to the likes of Dwight Smith. At least they're trying to get it done. And here James Jones gets it done with a little shake and bake. And into see a, a Detroit, high end to that, Chuck. Into Detroit territory. It's a nice job. Remember earlier in the game, this is the same look that the toss came from. They fake the toss and, and come on back to on the, on the slant route. The machine froze. It happens when the windshield dips below 10. <laughs> so now the Packers trying to get into an offensive rhythm. Very quiet here in Lambeau, though. Very quiet. Rodgers on the boot, looking and finding Jordy Nelson. Up near the first down marker. Pearson there to shove him out of bounds. Aaron Rodgers really throwing the football well. Again, Detroit talked. Every player we talked to and Coach Marinelli talked about him throwing on the run and how effective he is on the run. Look at that. That's just a perfect job of delivering a nice strike to Jordy Nelson. These Green Bay Packers go five deep at receivers. All of them can play. All get thrown the ball from Aaron Rodgers. Nelson, a second-round pick out of Kansas State. They caught 122 passes his final year in Manhattan. And here is Grant again, moving the chains again as well. I like his running style right now. He's going downhill, running straight downhill, running hard, showing good vision. This is the Ryan Grant we saw at the end of the year last year. 
Now, if you're Detroit, and of course you're you're looking to build and rebuild as they are just about every two or three years, you know, you're missing that big guy in the middle. They traded away Sean Rogers in the offseason. That's the guy, obviously, they miss the most. I, I, I believe so, absolutely. This defense to work. When Tony Dungy got down to Tampa, we played this defense. He said Warren Sapp was the most important cog to it. You had a guy in Sean Rogers, you let him go. That's their challenge. Go find a guy that can change things. Well, there, right in the middle of the field, it's Donald Lee making the catch. Calvin Pearson with the jarring hit, and the Lions are saying that the ball was knocked loose, that it shouldn't have been a catch. And look at this. The Packers, you're talking about game management. Hurry up, get to the line, and snap it if you can before the challenge flag comes in. See the play action hold the backers. Nice ball by Aaron Rodgers. Calvin Pearson comes up with a nice hit. It does look like he's juggling that ball. It's a matter of it, whether it hit the ground or not. Well, how about that? It is ruled incomplete after everybody gets down to about the 15-yard line. Yeah, and you think when you're 1-15, and 15, these games aren't important. Calvin Pearson's all over this field right now, making big plays for the Detroit Lions. Great play by Calvin Pearson, breaking up a strike from Aaron Rodgers. So originally, it looked like a completed pass. The Packers and everybody else moves downfield, and then the refs, they confer, and they say, you know what? Incomplete. And I think they made a good call there. Don, if you're Donald Lee, Aaron Rodgers expects you to catch that ball. you got to hold on despite taking the hit. So now second and ten for Rodgers, who has seen many of his receivers drop passes this afternoon. Seven on the afternoon. Now Rodgers is going to have to burn a timeout. That is Green Bay's second timeout. We'll see if that factors into play in the fourth quarter. Well, more football coming your way later today on Fox. The Dallas Cowboys with a win in Philadelphia clinch a postseason berth. But Brian Westbrook and the Eagles, they said, you know what? We hate the Cowboys. Now, the Eagles will know pretty much by kickoff whether or not they're still eligible for the postseason. They have to have some things go their way. Detroit's not only trying to win today, they're, they're, they're rooting for Philly right here, too. Look at these guys. There's apparently a few members of our promo department <laughs> pulling up to Green Bay. Nice job, guys. I mentioned Detroit pulling for Philly. Detroit, because of the Roy Williams trade, has Dallas's first round. Dallas loses. The, the, the pick gets better for them. Well, the question is, what do you do with those selections? you got to make them count, something the Lions have not done in recent years. Well, that's Grant off the left side. Nice chunk of change there for about eight. Calvin Pearson again. See a nice run there. As I said earlier, Ryan Grant's doing a great job of running downhill. You're going to see him start left. A nice block there by College and an and a ex exceptional run. Excuse me, that was sitting on the nice block. Good job by the Green Bay Packers. Mike McCarthy talked about sitting and how he kind of fits the mold. His ideal offensive line is power on the right side, athleticism on the left. You saw the power of Josh Sitton. They're excited about him. So now third and three. Rodgers. Fires and connects. Has a first down with James Jones making the snag. Guy that's been bothered all season with an injured knee. And that is going to be the final snap of the third quarter. The Lions force a turnover, get a second touchdown by Calvin Johnson and the winless Lions right in this thing as we head to the fourth. We are 15 minutes away from the Detroit Lions either making history or avoiding it. Living the, come on now. You, you can't be living the dream at 0-16. It has been a nightmare season for that man, Rod Marinelli, but undaunted. He has his team right in this game. Rodgers on the first play of the fourth quarter, pressured, and he is dropped again. Langston Moore. 
All right, let's show you how we got to 14-14. First quarter, Deshaun Wynn with the Packers' longest touchdown run of the year, 73 yards. And then it was the rookie out of Texas, Jermichael Finley, with his first score of the year. Dan Orlowski to Calvin Johnson, and then another Calvin, Calvin Pearson. Forcing the fumble, recovering it deep in Packer territory, and they find Johnson again. And we talked in the open. they got to ride their stars. They're, they're wearing out both Kevin Smith and Calvin Johnson. I think that's the recipe for success for Detroit. Second and ten for Rodgers. Incomplete intended for Jennings, who wanted a flag on the play, and he will get nothing and not like it. <laughs> nice, nice play by Lee Bodden right there. You're going to see Bodden on the physical bump get his hand in there. I think that's a good call. There's contact, but I think that's a clean play. Good job by Lee Bodden. Bodden, of course, the guy that came over from Cleveland in the trade for Sean Rogers. They also picked up a third-round pick, which they used on Andre Fluellen, who made the start today. Bodden has the lone interception for the Detroit secondary this season. A third and 11 out of the gun, Rodgers. Looking, hitting Jennings, well short of the first down, and a nice tackle by Calvin Pearson. Calvin Pearson's playing a heck of a game today. You see him come down as a safety, make a play on Ryan Grant, force the turnover. Right there, that's been a problem for, for Detroit's defense throughout. The, the, the focus of this defense, get him to check it down underneath, but then you got to tackle. That's been the Achilles heel of this defense, particularly in space. Great play by Calvin Pearson right there. What did Rod Marinelli tell us yesterday? I don't have time for people that don't tackle well. If you don't tackle, I'm going to vomit on you. <laughs> he did say that. He, he also said that Calvin Pearson's a guy he loves because he loves the game of football, and you can see that coming out here today. So now it is Mason Crosby from 36 yards out to give the Packers the lead again. He is true, and the Pack is back up by three. Lions, though, sticking around. Green Bay with its first point since the first quarter, taking a three-point lead over the winless Lions, courtesy of a Mason Crosby 36-yard field goal. Now the second-year man out of Colorado to boot it away to Avion Quezon. From the goal line. Drilled Charlie Pepra there with the hit at the 20. And, John, we talked to Dan Orlovsky yesterday. If it's close in the fourth quarter, what's the mentality of this team? Well, he, he said straight up, I think if this game's close at the end, they're going to look to me, Dan Orlowski talking about himself, and Coach Marinelli. They're the leaders of this team. I think if Dan Orlowski wants to be a good leader right now, throw the ball to Calvin Johnson. Well, as you said, you'd like to see him throw it a little bit more on first down. Take that chance deep to 81. Seven of those ten completions have been to Calvin Johnson. Then they'll keep it on the ground. Smith for three. Now, at the beginning of the broadcast, John, you mentioned give it to Kevin Smith, throw it to Calvin Johnson. And that's what they've done. Anybody else? Hello? Anyone else? <laughs> Less than 20 yards for the rest of the team. And that's the challenge of this of, of this organization. Their roster is depleted of talent. they got a couple young stars. They're riding them, but you can't win football games in the NFL without multiple players. Maybe the reason Orlovsky doesn't throw it to that guy is because he can't see him. <laughs> Little play action, and Orlovsky overthrows Calvin Johnson as Nick Collins, who's been around the ball all afternoon, was probably the closest guy and it's 6-5 Calvin Johnson seems like a tough target to to miss but he's he's overthrown him a couple times today yeah that's a miss throw right there by Orlowski a, a nice design of the play they've been wearing out Kevin Smith they bring Calvin Johnson in motion look like he's going to seal off on the run they run the bootleg off it <laughs> Detroit doing a nice job continuing to come up different ways to utilize Calvin Orlowski just two of his last seven has three receivers in the pattern, including Johnson in motion on 37. And the ball is hit as Orlovsky released it. And Fitzsimmons kind of got tackled by Brandon Chiller there as he was trying to make a play, and he's pleading his case, but to no avail. Well, smart play by Brandon Chiller right now. Once the ball's tipped, there is no bass interference. You're going to see the pressure. 
uh, by Green Bay right here. Nice job by uh, Jeremy Thompson right there, one of the young kids they're really counting on to get this front four back to where they've been. So Thompson didn't actually get a piece of the ball, but he got a big piece of Orlowski and maybe his face mask, as the quarterback wanted to call. Instead, Nick Harris is on the punt yet again. Blackman going to take it at his 35. Trying to break it outside. He's got a little bit of space. And stopped at the 47-yard line, a return of 12 yards. The Packers with a three-point lead and the ball. The musical chairs continue on the Green Bay Packers' front line. Only two offensive line starters are in the same position where they started the day. Tony Mall has checked in now at right tackle, and Darren College, who is over there, is back at his natural left guard position. Jason Spitz stays in at center for the injured Scott Wells. Grant off the right side, up near the first down as Ernie Sims shoves him out, and a flag as well. Going to get Le Ernie Sims for a late hit there. Those are tough plays as a defensive player. you got a guy running for his life down the sidelines. You're going to jump on him here by Ernie Sims. Defense number 50, 15-yard penalty, first down. See Ernie Sims here right here come to finish the play. That's a tough decision. That's one you got to pull off on, though. You ever gotten that call? I've got that quite a bit. <laughs> you got a lot of call from the commissioner's office, did you not? Uh, a couple times. Yeah. Uh -huh. Basically why you still need to work. <laughs> Gave back a few of those dollars. <laughs> so after the 15 yards, the ball down at the 27. Deshaun Wynn in the backfield in the eye. And it is Wynn hurtling and getting down to the 20. Big man showing some athleticism right there. Sean Wynn's done a nice job coming in today. Their second running back, Brandon Jackson, out with a wrist injury. Deshaun Wynn's come in and really given him a good lift when he's had to replace and, and give Ryan Grant a rest. Well, this is a guy who made four starts in 2007. This year, though, he spent the first five weeks on the practice squad, elevated in, in mid-October, and he's a guy that they feel like is working his way into their system. Of course, every team needs a couple of good running backs. Yeah, they got a lot of young players. You look at this Green Bay roster, there's depth on this roster. Their skill positions are great. Mike McCarthy talks about the emphasis they got to build from the lines. I think that's where they look for in the future. It's Grant again, dragged down. Sean Cody in on the stop. Grant gets near the first down marker. Grant now over 100 on the afternoon for the fourth time this season. Ninth time on his career. And it is indeed a first down. So now if you're that Detroit defense, John, you've got to somehow hold them to a field goal try. They've done a good job. You look at the yardage, Green Bay up to, you know, 360 yards. But Detroit's done a nice job keeping them out of the end zone for the most part. they got to do it again right here to stay in this game. Well, the Packers average just over 100 yards a game on the ground right now at 189. Grant again. And runs right into a couple of Lions. John Cody has had a nice afternoon with the stop. Fourth-year man out of USC, former second-round pick. This Green Bay offensive line, they're mixing and matching, putting together a lineup out there, but they're doing a nice job. Mike McCarthy, though, said to take the next step forward, and a lot of this has to do with health. They'd really like to get a consistent unit and play with a group for, for, for a, a multiple of games together. Continu continuity in an offensive line is, is huge in this league, and they haven't had that this entire year. That's Deshaun Wynn in motion. Empty backfield for Rodgers. Looking. Throws and connects with Jennings for another first down out at the five-yard line. We're really impressed with Aaron Rodgers. Uh, he's living in the shadow of a legend in Brett Favre. They love the guy around here, but you look at Aaron Rodgers' year. 
ultimately, and what impressed me most when we sat down with him, he understands more than anybody you're going to be judged at this position by wins and losses. He hasn't done it yet, but I think if you're a Packer fan, you got to feel good about the future. This guy can do it all. He can stay back in the pocket, throws the ball with tremendous accuracy, has the arm to make every throw, and then, as you see right there, can break the pocket and make throws downfield. That Jeff Back is on this team since 2001, wondering if he is about to make some history. Grant stopped by Ernie Sims, this time in the field of play. It's no game. And you watch Ernie Sims in these Detroit Lions, you, you see them all flow into the football. There's no quit in this team. They're fighting hard. They may not have the athletes, but they're really, they're really putting the effort out as they have all year to try to get this win. All right, so now as a defense, what do you do? you got to keep them out of the end zone. There's probably not enough time for this kind of offense to generate 10 points. You just simply got to do it. Whatever you got to do, you got to keep them out of the end zone. Rodgers, play action. Hits the fullback, Coon, who dives into the end zone for a touchdown. And Kuhn with the Lambeau leap, his second receiving touchdown of the year. You can see on the play, Kuhn right here, going to come through there. Aaron Rodgers with a nice fake to Deshaun Wynn, hits him out in the flat. Paris Lennon tries to make the play, but, but touchdown. Nice, nice design of a play by Green Bay. Beautiful pass by Aaron Rodgers. Second TD toss on the day for Aaron Rodgers, his 27th of the season, and now the Packers with a 10-point lead. And for the first time since the first quarter, Packers fans are jumping for joy a little bit. Touchdown catch by that man, backup fullback John Kuhn. Green Bay now with a 10-point lead. Aaron Rodgers closing in on 4,000 passing yards for the season. Mason Crosby, a good, solid kick to Avion Kaysan. And kind of appropriate that they were playing jump around here at Lambeau Field because that's what they like to do, a little leaping. We've seen it from Deshaun Wynn and Jermichael Finley. Even the full, when the fullback gets up there, it's impressive. But how about this? Matt Kenseth, your 2003 Nextel Cup champion. And Wisconsin native and Packer fan. He struggled a little, but who said these NASCAR guys aren't athletes? That's a, that's a, t that's a high wall right there. He'll be back at his regular job in mid-February for the Daytona 500. Right here on Fox. Do you like that Lambo leap? You loved seeing that as a Buccaneer, didn't you? I hated seeing that. Yeah. That was not good for us every time we saw that. Yeah, I know. So here the Lions go, down 10, Orlovsky looking and has a man, Standiford makes a juggling catch, gets it into Packer territory and down at the 44, there is a flag down. I think it's going to be pass interference on, on, on Harris would be, would be my thought. Before the pass, illegal contact, defense number 31, that penalty is declined. The play results in a first down. And there's that silhouette. They found. They finally found him. <laughs> it's we, John Standover. We, we've, we've discovered him. A gain of 35. But that ball way, way behind him. I mean, he had beaten Al Harris. Behind him. And, and But a great job by Standiford coming back and fighting for the ball, competing for it. You can't go to the other guys all day long. You need somebody else to contribute. They get a nice play out of Standiford right there. The guy who finished his career in college at Purdue, the leader in the Big Ten in receptions and receiving yards. And this one incomplete, intended for Casey Fitzsimmons. Nick Collins, the Pro Bowler, on the coverage. You see double coverage right there. He really tried to force that one in. You had Nick Collins and Brandon Chiller on the coverage. So now 8.01 to go as the Lions trying to avoid becoming the first 0-16 team in NFL history. You feel like you got to quicken the pace a little bit offensively? I think you can still run your game plan. You're down by... 10 points, you, you, you still, you get, a, you get a touchdown here, you're right back in it. You just got to make sure you get points on the board here. Orlovsky pressured, looking downfield, has a man wide open. It is Standiford who makes the catch and is out of bounds near the 10. They're going to call it the 9. 
And a great job by Orlowski buying time, stepping up in the pocket. You're going to see Staniford right there. Simply dropped in coverage. Al Harris drops him thinking he's going to get safety help. So Staniford with a gain of 35, then a gain of 36. And just like that, the Lions deep in the red zone. This team is certainly fighting. There's no quit in these Detroit Lions, and you're seeing that throughout the game today. There was also no Calvin Johnson on that play, but the run to Kevin Smith. He makes the cutback and the touchdown for the rookie. <laughs> great play, great play by Kevin Smith here. He continues to run hard. John Standiford, really the, the hero of that drive. You're going to see Kevin, Kevin Smith on the outside toss. Good job by Warren Norris right there, kicking out. Charlie Pepra making Brandon Chiller miss. Kevin Smith continues to be impressive for the Detroit Lions. Smith closing in on 100 yards for the second straight week. His eighth touchdown of the season. Hansen adds the PAT, and the Lions with the quick strike. They are back within three. We don't want no stinking 0 and 16. What was tougher today, John Lynch, finding the Lions' third offensive option, who was Mr. Invisible, or finding the guy who still believes? <laughs> there's one out there, and I bet there's a bunch of people out there in Detroit that are pulling from. Including a guy like Joe Barry, their defensive coordinator, of course, the, uh, the son-in-law of Rod Marinelli, and he indirectly came under fire last week after the loss to New Orleans in the post-game press conference, but now it's up to his defense to get it done. Here, Will Blackman getting the ball up to the 29. Joe Barry, a guy that you know a little bit as well, and, you know, this defense ranked 32nd in the league. The numbers don't lie. The numbers don't lie, but I don't think it's by Joe Barry's doing. As we talked to Kevin Smith, the young rookie, he said, I don't see Joe Barry playing cornerback. Now, they, they haven't been totally clean, but they, they have played with so many different players. And even when they have their starting lineup, there's a lack of talent. You, you, you can't do it for them out there. He's a good football coach, and I, I think the effort of these guys out here shows. And, and, and to me, that's great, great coaching, that they're inspiring these guys to continue to play hard and continue to fight. Lions have to make a stand here. Rodgers on first down, looking deep downfield. He has Donald Driver, and he's got it. Driver is going to go in for the touchdown. yard pass play the longest on the season for the Packers and Donald Driver just like that his fifth straight 1,000 yard season sixth overall both those are Green Bay records Crosby adds the PAT and the Packers match the Lions with an explosive play and talking to Detroit, they felt the key, one of the keys to stopping Aaron Rodgers was keeping him in the pocket. He breaks the pocket, but an outstanding double move by Donald Driver. We saw Calvin Jackson try to do that earlier to Al Harris. Al Harris didn't go for it. Right there, Lee Bodden took the bait, took the took the initial move. Donald Driver, just a quick hesitation, then went. Donald, Dri or, uh, Donald Driver catches a strike from Aaron Rodgers. Tremendous throw by Rodgers. So Joe Barry, we said his defense had to make a play. They did. Unfortunately, it was for Green Bay. Yeah, but again, as Kevin Smith said, I don't see Joe Barry out at corner. Lee Bodden, you got to, you know, they put him out there one-on-one. -on -one. At that point in the game, you gotta, you, you got to know that they're going to they're gonna take a shot on you. And Aaron Rodgers, we asked him, do you know how many yards Donald Driver needs to get to 1,000? He said, of course I do. Yeah, he knew well. Donald Driver didn't know himself. Aaron Rodgers knew exactly what Donald Driver, uh, Donald Driver needed. And how about this? He is the second quarterback to throw for at least 4,000 yards in a season in which he made his first career start. The other guy, 
pretty good. A two-time league MVP in Kurt Warner. He's an outstanding year. And I think that's part of the love that his teammates had for him. Aaron Rodgers jokingly said, hey, at 5-10, and 10, you got time to think about a lot of things, uh, alluding to the fact that he knew exactly where Donald Driver was. But I think it also shows what he, you know, the care that this guy has for his teammates. Well, Mason Crosby, who's had his issues kicking the ball off of this tee, he had a busy day. He had a 69-yard free <laughs> kick attempt at the end of the first half. So now trying to pin Detroit back, which finds itself down 10 points for the second time in the last minute and a half. Kaysan's going to bring it out. Gets hit, spins away, and finally gets up to the 20-yard line. Now I question whether or not Detroit had enough explosiveness to get down the field in a hurry. Well, thanks to John Standiford, they did. <laughs> they made some plays. He made two big plays down the field. Uh, now maybe you take some of the attention off Calvin Johnson. They understand they got to cover other people as well. But I think you're going to see Green Bay back off a little, at least keep safeties back on these receivers. They don't want to give up the quick strike right now. Well, the Lions moved the ball 80 yards in a minute and two seconds the last time they had it. They got to step on the accelerator here as well. Orlovsky hits Johnson. Woodson hits him. He bounces off and then gets a first down up at the 32. And now at this point, you got to start looking at maybe a no huddle, and that's that's kind of what Orlovsky is running right yeah, now. Yeah, they're going there. Certainly need to go to a no huddle. Right there on that play, it's a great illustration of Calvin Johnson, and I think what's going to make him special. He's got the physical talent, but he's also got the will. He, he, he wouldn't go down right there. He carried three or four guys for about five yards. Orlovsky looking downfield, checks it down to Kevin Smith, gain of about four. Orlovsky showing nice composure here. You know, every game that he's played, minus maybe last week, he's given these guys a chance to win. I think played better than any of the quarterbacks they've had. This guy can play in the in the National Football League at, at, at a good level. He's very impressive to talk to, doing a nice job here. Here on the screen, Smith. Gets a decent block and gets out of bounds after getting the first down. Moving the chains, stopping the clock. A little management by the Lions offense. And that's the important thing, continue to move the chains. You used to hear Brett Favre talk all about in two minutes, all he's concerned with. He's not looking at the clock, he's concerned with moving the chains. You want to go at an up-tempo style, the important thing is to move the chains. They still have time. Orlovsky now on first down, checks it down. As Kaysan is spun out of bounds there by Tremont Williams after a short game. Got to start looking downfield a little bit more. Yeah, but it's it's also difficult right now. Green Bay content to keep the ball in front of them, come up and make the tackle. Nice job by that, by, by Tremont uh, Williams right there. What part of the field is susceptible, though, defensively right now? Well, I think the middle of the field right now. They're keeping the safeties over the top outside. The middle of the field in the slot, I think that's where you can get some, some yardage. That one well behind Calvin Johnson, so now that's going to leave him third and seven. Now less than six minutes away from history. The Detroit Lions already the first 0-15 team in league history. Trying to avoid having their fate sealed in the record books forever. Orlovsky checks it down to Fulton, who gets rung up there by Al Harris right around the neck. Nice play by Al Harris right there. Al Harris gives Detroit a little dose of its own medicine, goes to the old Tampa 2, not, not something they really major in. They don't play a whole lot, but you watch Al Harris. Uh, you watch Al Harris finish here. He does it with a little authority. A Lynch special, if you will. <laughs> I thought that boy young. I had him there in Tampa as a rookie. <laughs> So here we go, fourth and four. Orlovsky out of the gun. Throws complete and a flag down. Standiford, who's had a huge fourth quarter in front of Al Harris. Hey, you got to make. 
you, you got to make big plays. John Standiford continuing to step up. Orlowski showing confidence in him, going Before to him pass, without Harris all over him. Defense number 31. The penalty is declined. The play results in a first down. So it would have been a first down either way, but you got to love the way Standiford's going after it, John. Let's watch John Standiford right there. Al Harris all over him. But look at that catch. Stitch his hands out. That's perfect fundamental football. Reach out, grab it, grab it strong, bring it in. Nice play here in the second half by John Standiford. Lions now three for three on fourth down conversions this afternoon. This keeps their season alive. Another check down to Kaysan out of the backfield. Picks up about six. Now approaching four and a half to play in the season. And I think you're all right. Continue to move those chains. You're going to have an opportunity, whether it be the onside kick or a defensive stop. Continue to move the ch chains. The important thing, you've got to get points on the board here. Yeah, even a field goal will do them That's some right. good here. Orlowski looking, trying to get it out to Smith, who was trying to run before he caught it. And Al Harris giving it to him. <laughs> Did you teach him that too, John? No, I didn't teach him no, that. No, I didn't think so. <laughs> You're clearly seeing Green Bay content to let the underneath stuff happen in front of them. As long as they come up and make good tackles, Al Harris was in nice position to do it right there. They're content to let, let Detroit throw the ball underneath. Now third and four on this frigid afternoon. You've got to move Calvin Johnson around here. Maybe bring him in motion. There they go right there. Orlowski looking downfield and overshoots Casey Fitzsimmons. So yet again, it'll be fourth down for the Lions. And the question is, do you try the field goal with your kicker, Jason Hansen, who is eight for eight from 50 yards plus this season? It doesn't look as good as he's been. It looks like they're going for it. They have to get down to the 31-yard line. Ball is caught, and another first down. Calvin Johnson paid for it on that one, and he is still down on the ground as Nick Collins, the pro bowler, rung him up. Tough, tough cut, clutch catch. Look at Calvin Johnson here. They get him. They put him in move. He puts a little stutter on. He gets it right in the rib, right in the hip, but he hangs on to the football. I, I'm telling you, this kid is so impressive. He's got the physical ability, but he's also got the toughness. Uh, he's down, but big time, big time play by Calvin Johnson. Well, Johnson, a Pro Bowl alternate, the second alternate. Walking off the field under his own power. Now goes over the century mark for the fifth time this year. Twice against the Packers. He had a 129 his first time around, including a couple of scores here. Two touchdowns as well today. Ties a career high with nine catches. So now under four to go for the Lions. Setting up a screen. It is Smith. And he is going to lose yardage, but wisely gets out of bounds. Nice job by Tremont Williams in the open field with Kevin Smith not taking the bait on the screen. Uh-oh. Well, there is a flag on the play. Over in the Packers' sideline. Let's see what they're going to call here. hurts after the play was over unsportsmanlike conduct by the offense number 34 pushed the ball on a player's face 15 yard penalty it's second down well let's see what happened with smith and he, uh, yeah he throws the ball in the face of one of the green bay packers and for a kid that was so mature when we met with him yesterday and really is Building himself up as a team leader, that is a no-no. No, you can't do it. I'm sure the guys were talking to him on the sideline. That happens. you got to take it, walk right back. The game's much more important than any personal battles right now. Kevin Smith's a fiery guy. He's a great competitor. He just can't do that. He'll learn that. But a big mistake at this point. 
Well, Calvin Johnson, who was injured on the play earlier, now back in the game at the top of the screen. But it is second and 29 after the 15-yard penalty on Smith. Orlowski looking downfield, trying to find Colbert, and it was a little bit behind him. Good coverage there by Tremont Williams, Charlie Pepper there as well. You know, remember, and what that penalty does, as you mentioned earlier, Chris, you don't need seven here. you got to get three. You've got to have something to show for this drive because you're running out of time here. That penalty, unfortunately, takes them way out of field goal range. Well, let's see if they can make it up here. Well, now you got to get at least half of your back on this play right here. I mean, it's third and 29. And you got to get it down to the 40 or the 30. I've got to get it somewhere close. Cut it in half. Orlowski works it short to Felton, who gets nailed again by Al Harris. And, and you can't work it short right there. you, you, you got to get points on the board. You aren't going to kick a field goal from here. going to be a tough, tough fourth down conversion. That's a mistake by Orlowski. you got to take a shot. I think he had Calvin Johnson on the corner route right behind Al Harris there. And the bad news is Felton actually catches the ball, stays inbound. The clock continues to run. So everything about that play just didn't work. So fourth and 28. Green Bay knows all about giving up 4th and 26 in the playoffs, but not 4th and 28. We'll see what happens here. Orlowski looking deep downfield for Johnson. Overshoots him, and Collins picks it off. Collins, who leads the NFL in return yardage, is getting it going. There is a flag down. He's finally dragged down at the Detroit 39. Dan Orlowski had no choice there. He had to throw it up. But if you're going to throw it up, give your guy a chance to make the play. Nick Collins has had an outstanding year. He keeps it up. His seventh, he is keeping pace with Charles Woodson. His seventh pick going to Hawaii. Well-deserved trip over there for Nick Collins. It will be the final After the interception, illegal block in the back by Green Bay number 51. A 10-yard penalty is enforced from the spot of the foul. Green Bay keeps the ball. First down. That is Brady Papinga. I think Nick Collins could have fair caught that one. I mean, it was up there to get, but you still got to bring him in. He's done a nice job of that all year long. If so, if he had fair caught it, maybe we could have seen another free kick from Mason Crosby. <laughs> you know, let's try the 97-yarder or so. But that that drive was really, really stalled by the penalty to Kevin Smith, a guy who has played his heart out, has become a leader. Can't make that kind of mistake. It was it was devastating to him on that drive. Grant, for a few, you can hear the 0-16 chance by the Lambeau faithful. And well, there's only one other team that has gone winless in the modern era without a tie. That would be the 1976 Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Now, John McKay's squad was an expansion team. He was asked, what did he think about the execution of his club? He said, I'm all in favor of it. Steve Spurrier, of course, the South Carolina head coach, was their quarterback. This team averaged less than nine points per game, was shut out five times. But let's keep in mind, this was an expansion team. And they went 0-14. Now it's a 16-game regular season. I suppose if you're a guy like Jeff Backus, who has been here for eight years, you've seen the down, down times. You know you're just two minutes and 40 seconds away from making history. And as we talked in the open, not the kind of history you want to make. This Detroit Lions roster needs a ma major overhaul. It, it looks like they've given a vote of confidence to Martin Mayhew, a former teammate of mine in Tampa, to be in charge of that. you got to start making good decisions, get the talent up to par on this organization. Wynn is going to stay in bounds and force the Lions to burn another timeout. Well, listen, they have given effort every week. I think last week when they lost 42-7 to to the Saints, some of the guys started looking around and said, well, we didn't play our best game. We probably didn't give it our best effort. But we met with a handful of these guys. No finger pointing. And that leadership goes directly to their coach, Rod Marinelli, who, as you said, has kind of embraced the adversity over the year. Yeah, he has. And he's as fine as coach as I've been around. Uh, he respects the game. He's got so much love for this game, and he's so good for this game. Now, whether you make it through an 0-16 season or not, that remains to be seen. Uh, 
you know, but I think the thing is you, you could have, uh, you know, Bill Walsh, Vince Lombardi. I, I think anyone took this Detroit Lions roster with all the bad decisions they've made over the years. You aren't going to win with this roster. They're showing great fight. They simply are outmanned. Third and six. Rodgers connects with Deshaun Wynn. He's got a first down, and he fumbles it. He's fumbled the ball. The Lions say they've got it. So maybe there is a little life left in Detroit. It's one of those things when you're in these piles, it often changes hands about three or four times. You can't see it. It's whoever's the best wrestler of the ball underneath <laughs> there, and some nasty stuff goes on over there. And it is a Green Bay football. That's Darren College, I think, comes up with it. I think for Detroit, that was their last chance. They've, they're down to one timeout. They just got the conversion. The ball comes out. They got life again. But unfortunately for them, Green Bay, Darren College does a nice job getting in there, getting that ball. So they will wind the clock, Detroit, with a two-minute warning and one more timeout. If they had hopped on that football, at least they would have had a shot. Yeah. The chance of 0 and 16 raining down on the Lions sideline. History is about to become reality. Back at Lambeau Field, the Packers with a couple of touchdowns here in the fourth quarter, trying to salt this one away. And the Lions 0 and 16. His win cuts it back, has another first down. And there is a flag on the play. After the play was over, personal foul. Unnecessary roughness offense, number 71. 15-yard penalty. Central Florida guys are going to have to learn ten. about that extracurricular activity. Yeah, they, that's Josh Sitton, the guy who used to block for the Lions running back, Kevin Smith. All right, so what's happened since the Lions' last win against Kansas City? Well, it's been 371 days and counting all the way till next September. We've elected a new president in this country. Michael Phelps has been kicking a little tail. And, well, Brett Favre retired, then unretired, <laughs> then started playing again. Who knows what he's going to do next? <laughs> so here we go. No ties for the 76 Buccaneers, nor the 08 Detroit Lions. Wynn is going to run it again for a few more yards. Both he and Grant over 100 yards this afternoon. Well, now it's all about what do the Lions do with those draft picks. Big questions. They have two first-rounders. Of course, the first one overall. They'll also have the Dallas Cowboys selection in the 09 draft. And speaking of the Cowboys, because of what happened earlier today with Tampa losing at home against Oakland and with Chicago losing at Houston, that Dallas-Philly game that's coming up next is essentially a playoff game. The winner advances. The loser goes home. As you get a look at some of the other scores, like Atlanta winning against the Rams and Carolina clinching the two seed with a last second win in New Orleans. So we have our first 0 and 16 team, John Lynch. You ever think you would see it? I never thought I would. I, you know, games are hard to win in this in, in this uh, league, but it's a league set up for parity. The Lions, how they got themselves into this mess, they had the number one, you know, top ten picks over and over and over. They miss completely. Not only do they miss, I mean, you got guys like Ernie Sims. People may not be happy with how far he's come, but he's still playing at a high level. You can't have guys like Mike Williams, Charles Rogers that are no longer in the league. You can't have Joey Harrington as the number three quarterback down in New Orleans. You can't miss that bad. 
That is the final snap of the season. Here at Lambeau Field. And the O in Motown officially stands for O and 16. The first of its kind in NFL history. For John Lynch, I'm Chris Rose. Packers a winner. Philly and Dallas next.